watch TV. Don't read magazines. Don't even listen to NPR. Create your own. Action Max 6, I believe, and we're going all the way to Action Max 8. Now, if I can scrounge up a couple of extra cartoons, we may possibly have an Action Max 9. But for right now, we're looking at only two more Action Maxes for the rest of this season. And if you don't know, the Action Maxes are the markers of the season when the action maxes are over the season is coming to a close so as you guessed it or as you might have guessed it or as you maybe will guess it is that all the possibilities could guess it anyways if you guessed it the season's gonna be coming to a close soon moving on from that we have a small little announcement for you patreon members you max squad elite members it has come to our attention that the evil General Yutube has decided to grace us by opening the vault. If you are a Turbo Max or a Ultra Max member, you will get to partake of the General Yutube vault. What is that? And what is that vault, you ask? That vault is the restricted cartoons that we have been trying to show on the regular shows, but evil General Yutube says, no! These are some classics, so if you've asked for it, it's probably on this lineup. Head on over to Patreon and get yourself into that Turbo Max or that Ultra Max. And if you are one of our Friday night people, then you just got to experience the very first Animame that we have experienced. So, make sure that you spread the joy, spread the news, and tell your friends. Bring some more people on over and let's have a bigger party on Friday nights. And make sure that you are heading over to that KJ and the Izzle channel. Right, Izzle? Right! Ha! That is all we have for right now. So, I ask the Izzle, what, pray tell, do we need to do right now? Ha! 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 We need to go get ourselves a heaping bowl of their favorite part of Teddy Grahams. I think Teddy Grahams used to actually be a cereal, but Make sure that you stay right here with us from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And make sure you stay for the closer because it is a humdinger. I'm the only place to be for Saturday mornings, Sunday mornings, and a bunch of other cool stuff. And KJ and the Izzle and some other things. <gasps> Saturday morning to mess out. After years of peaceful existence on the distant planet Valoria, Questar and his people were forced into battle. The power of their step crystal ripped a hole in the fabric of time, sending them backward to prehistoric Earth. Unaware that at the same moment the evil Emperor Krulos was plotting to capture the step crystal with his own grotesque Rulon forces. And so, the battle continues in a new place in time with Dino Riders. Easy now, easy Steracosaurus. Just a few more feet and your stable walls will be in place. Hey, Questor! Let me give you a hand! Black, black, no! Oh. 
Is everyone all right? No injuries, sir! I guess I pulled too hard, huh? Uh, lad, why don't you go to the north training field? Gunner's working the Taurosaurus class, and I, uh, I think they're short a man. Yes, sir, I'm on my way! Hey, Gunner! Questar said I could practice with you. Is it okay? Yeah, sure. Tag's riding solo. You can crew with him. Great. Thanks. Now I can show him what I can do. <laughs> you mean what we can do. This is a team effort, lad. Okay, listen up, man. Your Taurosaurus is packed with enough firepower to wipe out anything you'll encounter on the battlefield. If you know how to use it properly. That's what we're here to learn. Drill one. Nova, Boulder, you're first. Tag and lad, you're on deck. Engage individual targets. Very good. Now, laser barrage. Good work, man. You've been paying attention. All right, now, tag and lad. Okay, lad, it's the switch on your left. I know, Tag. Just let me show you. Engage individual targets. <sighs> Not bad. Okay, now for the heavy artillery. A uh, lad, did you flip off the safety catch? I guess I forgot to. We've got to work together. That's what this exercise is all about. Okay, lesson two. Field maneuvers. Three against one. The three of you against one of me. Let's see how good you really are. It takes two of us to handle this thing, lad. We've got to get together. Well, we almost had him. Nice work, men. Now, let's try it again. I have a better idea, Dino Riders! This time, let's do it for real! My Triceratops versus your Taurosaurus! I'll give you a chance. I'll sit this one out. <laughs> Quistar, rule on alert. We're under attack. Reinforcements needed urgently. We're on our way, Gunner. Try to hold him. We have to arm up. Rulon alert. Arm up and move out. Gunner, hold off those Rulons as long as possible. It'll take us a while. And right now, it's us against them. All right, everybody. Just remember what I taught you. You have a dead chance, Dino Rider. You 
set them up and I knock them down. That's what I call teamwork. <laughs> That's how we win a battle. Our battle is just beginning. A battle between you and me. Prepare to meet your ancestors, Dino Rider. First, though, your Taurosaurus shall meet my Tyrannosaurus Rex. After these messages, we'll be right back. This battle in the history of the universe is about to begin. The Rulons! They're about to attack! Quickly, we'll have to trap them in the canyon. The Dimetrodons are harmless. Leave them be. The clever Dino Riders seal off the escape route. It's up to you, Commandos. Now! Leaping into the path of the thundering giants, the Commandos close off the front of the pass. Blast them to bits, Admin. Put this in your Easter basket, Krulos! Don't forget to ride home, Rulons! The Dino Riders put on the finishing touches. But Krulos escapes on Tyrannosaurus Rex. Look out! Sky! The Stegosaurus! Take this, lizard lips! I'll be back, Questa. The battle is over, but the action's just beginning with a complete Dino Riders collection. Dino Riders! Let Krulo show you how to squash a Dino Rider! Face it, Dino Rider! You haven't a chance! <laughs> Give me cover and fire, all of ya! I don't know what's wrong with my lasers! He who takes on Krulo's takes on the conqueror of the galaxy! And he who takes on one Dino Rider takes on all Dino Riders! I'm pleased to see you're still hanging tough, Gunner. <laughs> Nothing like a few Rulons to make our day, Questar. Glad you could make it to the party. Just in time. Uh, it looks as though your students learned fast. All of you, you did a great job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. everyone did a great job, but me. I'll bet I could have taken on that dumb Krulos if my main lasers hadn't jammed. All right, Dino Riders, back to camp. If I'm ever going to be a hero, I'm going to have to do it myself. Come on, boy, we'll show them we're as brave as the rest of the Dino Riders. Once again, I have been betrayed by my underlings. No, not a traitor. I know how to deal with traitors. 
this is something much worse. I am betrayed by the constant incompetence of my underlings. Here, I am the greatest warrior of all time, surrounded by the dregs of the universe. But a great leader triumphs in spite of difficulties. And in spite of you, I shall destroy the Dino Riders. I have only to wait for the right moment when they are at their weakest. Then I will crush them once and for all! To your post, all of you, await my command! You shall not fail me again! Hey, has anybody seen Lad? I haven't, but he's usually somewhere around here. Believe it or not, I've looked everywhere. No, I'm not going to answer him. And I'm not going back until I can prove that I'm a hero, too. That's something I have to do myself. Strange. I, I sense Lad's presence, but I get no response. Could he be injured or lost? Attention all troops. Mount up for massive search party. Dino Rider Lad is missing. I'll cover on my Quetzalcoatlus. Gunner and I'll head out on the Taurosaurus. Great Cruels, your moment may be at hand. The Dino Rider base is at half strength. <laughs> this time I can feel it. Victory will be mine. Rulons, to your mounts! What's that? Finally, a chance to be a hero. Hold on, guys. I'll get you out in no time. The racket! Oh, great. Now I've made it worse. I guess I better call for help. All right. Got you covered, little buddy. Tag and I are on the way. Questar, we found Lan. He's okay. Gunner and I are going in for a rescue. Good work, Tag. Bring him home. All troops, return to camp. Lad, half the camp's been out looking for you. What's up? There's a herd of Taurosaurus trapped on the ledge behind that pile of rock. I tried to help, but... Let's try again. It's a her, lad. And listen, she's really upset. And there's why. Poor guy. Must have gotten shoved off the edge. Don't worry, fella. We'll get you back to your mom. Believe this is yours. Lad, mission accomplished. <laughs> Rulons! The final victory is within our grasp! Let the attack begin! What is it, Mind's Eye? I... I sense danger. Danger? To Lad? Not just to Lad. To us all. The base is under attack! Yeah, trust Krulos to know when to strike. The Rulons must have seen our search parties leaving the base. Oh, this is my fault! The troops are all looking for me. Well, don't be too hard on yourself, lad. We're all in this together. I've got to get back to base. 
I've got to help the others. Dino Riders, this is a red alert. The Rulons have caught us at a bad moment. Every available Dino Rider, mount your dinosaurs. We are under attack. We are under attack. We can count on it. That Taurosaurus herd made a great bunch of soldiers. But I guess they'd rather go back to the wilds and stay <laughs> civilians. 
Not all of them, Gunner. <laughs> Here you go, fella. <laughs> Well, lad, how's it feel to be a hero? Huh? That Mother Taurosaurus brought her herd here because you rescued them. But I didn't rescue them. Gunner and Tag did all the work. We did it together, lad. We're a team. That is our strength. Krulos has a great weakness. He only thinks of himself. Yeah, and the next time Krulos comes around, I'm gonna... <laughs> We are really gonna get him. Another action-packed lineup of Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming your way. What a meal, what a meal, a whole bowl of cereal. What a meal, what a meal, a whole bowl of cereal. Someone asks me what I like to eat I tell them what makes my dinner time complete I stop eating all of the food It's not uncivilized, it's not crude Who needs the four food groups when you
used to be four ordinary teenagers. Until one day, we met some new friends from out of town. They were called Dinosaucers. My friends and I became the secret scouts, allies to these dinosaurs from outer space, and joined in their battles against Genghis Rex and the evil Tyrannos. The dinosaurs are leaving, Bossasaur! Well, follow them! Mr. Hero. <laughs> All in a day's work, ma'am. Sabertooth tigers weren't around at the same time as dinosaurs. How do you know? Uh, were you there? No, but I think maybe my uh, mother was. Shh, and watch Mr. Hero. Well, boys, I don't want to hurt you, so I think it's time I used the good old Bio-Freeze weapon. be fine in an hour, but that took a lot out of me. It's time to recharge my powers. Next stop, the, the Hero, Hero Haven. Haven. Time to recharge my powers in the Powertron. <laughs> I wish I had a power drawn. I'd settle for some more popcorn. Kids, remember Mr. Hero's golden rule and help your neighbor. Always do what's right. And <laughs> next time you're in Hollywood, be sure to visit me here at Mega Media Studios. See you next time. He's a real hero, huh? Yeah, he'd never let anyone down. I'd sure love to meet him. Why don't we? He said to visit him next time we were in Hollywood. Well, won't everyone worry if they don't know where we are? I'll leave Ryan a note telling him that we've gone off to Hollywood. 
Are you sure that this is what the secret scouts were watching? Yes, Rex. We intercepted this wave band as it was being picked up by their headquarters antenna. This Mr. Hero is very powerful for a mammal. I'll try to get a sound. Time to recharge my powers in the Powertron. <laughs> oh, a weakness! And next time you're in Hollywood, be sure to visit me here at Mega Media Studios. See you next time! This Mr. Hero and his Biofreeze weapon could be a threat to our conquest of Earth. We'll pay him a little visit. And Kylo, prepare my ship, alert the others, and find out what a Hollywood is. I think we found Hollywood! What a strange city! All the buildings are so skinny! There's one that isn't. Let's set down there. Too weak to hold up the ship. Huh? Wow, that was fun. Oh no, my ship! Ello's gonna court martial me. We'll work it out. The noise came from in here. Uh oh. Let's just go finish our rounds. No way. I heard something. And no one's allowed in here after working out. Sarah, what do I do? Don't move. Look, it's one of the monsters from the Star Battle movie. You know, a robot. Hey, these things sure look real nowadays. Ugly, though. Come on, Bonehead. The coast is clear. We will arrive at Mega Media Studio in a matter of minutes. Excellent. Then we'll take care of this so-called Mr. Hero. I don't see Mr. Hero, Sarah. And this place is scary. It isn't real, Bonehead. It's just movie stuff. Look! Eek! What was that? Here we go again. Hide! This place gives me the creeps. Ah, chill out a little. Ah! <gasps> hey! This place really is haunted. Wait for me! <laughs> Can you plug that electronic leak to Metro? There. The Taranos won't be able to eavesdrop on the Secret Scout's communications again. I'd like to find out what Rex has seen already. Here's a hint, Allo. Sarah left this note. She and Bonehead went to Hollywood to meet Mr. Hero. You think that Rex was monitoring the Mr. Hero program? Yeah. And I'll bet old Fangface won't know that it's just a TV show. Ryan, if Rex thinks that Mr. Hero is real, He'll try to do something about him. Sarah and Bonehead could be in danger. Demetro, ready my ship. Next stop, Hollywood. You sure look scared to me. Nah, just surprised, that's all. Like I said, you gotta, gotta hang, hang tough. tough. <laughs> ah -ha! Mammal, where can I find Mr. Hero? I command you to tell me. Sheesh! Give a bit player a costume and he thinks he's Godzilla! Hey, watch this! I'll show you tough! Ah, uh, think you're tough, huh? Yeah! <laughs> Somebody get the number of that truck! Sarah! Mr. Hero isn't here! It's empty! We came all this way for nothing. Someone's coming. 
Hide somewhere fast. Here, get in the power tron. You're all there's room for in there. Be quick and find the cylinder Mr. Hero stepped into at the end of that television transmission. Here it is. Should I open it? Take the power tron back to the ship. What a mess. Everyone, ready your weapons. Be prepared. This may be the fight of your lives. What? Hello? <laughs> Anyone want to play? No! Ooh. <laughs> Bonehead! In Mr. Hero's Powertron? What's going on here? Can I go home? Oh, no, oh. indeed. I have something much more interesting planned for you. Hello, ship is approaching. Let's take off and attack them. Not yet. We'll stay here undercover, let them land, and then we'll spring the trap. Listen. Hello, I've reached Sarah on my ring. She says that Rex has bonehead. Ever meet us at the landing site? Now we'll spring the trap. Sarah, are you all right? I'm fine, but we've got to save Bonehead. Any idea where Rex is? Uh, yes. Try and catch us now, Al. Secret Scout Ring, power, power up! up. Power power up. up. Go after them. In what? It'll take time to repair the ship. Hmm. The power pods are still intact. True, but what can we attach them to? How about these? I wouldn't fly those if we were the last dinosaurs on Earth. We are the last dinosaurs on Earth. Don't remind me. Any sign of them? They're about 20 miles ahead. Rex, we're being followed. It's Aloe and the Scouts. And who cares? Those primitive craft can't catch my ship. Rex is picking up speed. Who can play that game? Hang on. They're still closing on us, Bossasaur. That's impossible. If we can't outrun them, We'll outgun them! Not very friendly, is it? Maybe this'll make them nicer. What? All it's doing is making noise. Ryan, what's the matter? It's just a movie gun. It's not real. Mine's not real either. We've got no weapons. Then we'll have to use brains. I've got a plan, Ryan, but it's risky. Now tell Sarah to... Okay, got it. Demetro, try to force Rex's ship towards those mountains ahead of us. We've got to get Rex lowered. Listen carefully, Sarah. We're going to dive into the canyon. Then you'll... Okay, 10-4. Demetro, take her up to a higher altitude. The Metro is above us! Never mind! I'll get rid of Aloe first! Let's do it! If this works, the Metro Sonic Welder will loosen those rocks! Here it goes! My 
My ship will respond to helm control. We'll have to set down. We've done it. He's landing. All right, Allo. You want to talk? Good. Because there's someone here I want you to say hello to. Hello, Allo. Hello. Don't worry, Bonehead. We'll save you. You'll never see this dumbasaur again, Allo, unless you do exactly as I say. Rex says that if we don't deliver Mr. Hero and his biofreeze weapon to him, we'll never see Bonehead again. Oh, no. But Sarah said that Mr. Hero wasn't at the studio. How will we find him? Most Earth businesses keep computer records on their employees. Perhaps Mr. Hero's address is listed in the studio's files. It's worth a try. Aha, here it is. Some place called Beverly Hills. I hope the terrain isn't too rough to land in. But, Mr. Hero, this isn't what I meant when I asked for help. I gave you an autographed glossy 8x10 photo of me. What more could a girl want? But you're the only one who can save my friend. Uh, I usually am. Uh, look, kids, I'd like to help, but my contract says no more personal appearances. But, look. Sorry. Hey, tell you what, though. I'll let you help me. What? Yeah, which color do you think looks best on me? Uh, the blue one goes with my eyes. Oh, why, you phony? Hey, 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 stay back. D don't hurt me. Hurt you? I'd never hurt anybody. But you sure hurt me. Me? You. I always thought you were great. I love the way you always save people and defend the helpless. But you're no hero at all. I never said I was a hero. I'm an actor. You said the golden rule was to always help your neighbor and do what's right. And I believed you. Boy, do I feel stupid now. Well, don't worry. I won't tell anybody else what a big fake you are. Uh, well, thanks. Come on, Ryan. Let's go rescue Bonehead. I never liked your show anyway. But, well, I, I'd like to help, but well, I'm scared. What do we do now? Oh, Ryan, I don't know. Hey, kids. <clears throat> <clears throat> Let's go rescue that friend of yours. You're, you're going to help us? <laughs> As you reminded me, young lady, that's what heroes do. Uh, Mr. Hero, I forgot to tell you. When you meet my friends, they'll be wearing, uh, costumes. <laughs> Don't worry, little lady. I'm used to that. Rex has promised that as soon as Mr. Hero gives him the biofreeze weapon, he'll let Bonehead go. So we'll send Mr. Hero in. Uh, couldn't we all go in together? Rex is expecting you to go in alone. G g g g great! All right, Rex. <laughs> Come out and face me. Certainly, puny mammal. <laughs> Yikes. So you're Mr. Hero? <laughs> you don't seem like much of a hero to me. Don't make me prove it, villain. Where's my friend? And now, Mr. Hero, surrender your biofreeze weapon, and just in case you plan a trick. When I make a promise, I keep it. Now, release my friend. Never, fool! Now that I've got what I want, I'll do what I like. And none of you can make me do otherwise! I wouldn't bet on that, Rex. I knew you'd break your promise. And Kylo, Stiraco, put your weapons down. I'll handle Allo. Let's see how you heroes like this! Like what? It didn't work! You tricked me! 
<laughs> you tricked yourself, big fella. And Kylo, Sturaco, get them! Not this time. Get us out of here! Help! I've still got Bonehead. Not for long, buddy. Get you for this. Secret scouts ring. Now maybe you'll learn to keep your word. Oh, shut up, you, you blubber mammal! We appreciate your promise not to tell anyone about us. Well, even if I did, they'd just tell me I was starting to believe my own show. Well, I'll always believe in you. But I thought you said... What I said was the truth then, but you changed. You're a real hero. Stay right there for another action-packed lineup of Saturday morning Cartoon Max Out. Hey, there's 
something awfully screwy going on around here. And uh, what's up, Doc? Well, one of the strangest things I... No! That schooly rabbit. Oh well. Plenty of you men wear one of these. That's the last straw. I'll get that rabbit. Hey, Doc. Hey, Doc, where are you? destroys an artificial intelligence lab. Adam Hollister is framed. His son, Jack Hollister, sets out to prove his father's innocence, that someone else had caused the explosion and had stolen an experimental computer brain. 
Merging it with his own brain, he transforms into the master criminal known as Cybron. To fight Cybron and his evil Bioborgs, Jack Hollister becomes Sky Surfer 1, leader of the Sky Surfer Strike Force. Crazy stunts. Sore loser! The Sky Surfer Strike Force! think they are beaten Cybron. But they're in for a big surprise, aren't they, Father? Yes, indeed, Serena. That was only a warm-up for what I have planned for them when I take control of Computopia. Mr. Garland? Jack Hollister and his people have just arrived. We came as soon as I got your message. Thank you, Jack. No thanks needed. Without your financing, there would be no Sky Servers. How can we help? So you think Cybron is going to attack your experimental city? Yes, it's the city of the future. Talk about wipeouts. He could turn this entire island into one deadly kahuna. Suppose Cybron gained control of the city's digitized defense systems. Then what? I've already started worrying about that possibility. Ready the bio Yes, Father. 
Laserette, this is Serena. Launch, attack! I'm on my way. I'm locking on the coordinates of target. We'll guide you in. Thank you, Laserette. First phase of mission completed. No resistance. Good boy. I'll be above to monitor procedures. Down there, the main control room. Cybron's bioboard. Predator to Serena. Now altering the security code on the master control computer per plan. Good. And as soon as you're done there. Proceed to the sub-basement level. Serena out. Intruder alert! Intruder alert! Security breach in Civic Center. Code blue. Cyber. My day's just been made. It's time to kick hind end. on our digitrans. It's monitoring the attack. Sore loser, crazy stunts. You and the others head to the Civic Center and tackle the Borgs. I'll zero in on the Cyberhawk. Hey, babe. Nice to see you again. The feeling ain't mutual. Now, what do you and the rest of Cybron's Borgs want here? Talk, or it's lasers out for good, babe. It's already too late to stop our plan. See, Noxious and the others have already fixed it, so that only we can control the master computer. And he who controls the master computer controls the city. If that's Cybron's only objective, where are they going? Obviously, you guys have another agenda. Like we lost Noxious. Where's Air and Sliced Ice? They went after Grenader! This is it! There they are! No! Don't shoot! 
Please, son. Mama? You wouldn't shoot your own mom, would you, Pumpkin? Huh? No, Enforcer! It's just one of his hypnotic illusions. He's a telepath, remember? He just peeked into your mind to find out what your mom looks like. <laughs> Should hold our friends for a while. Now we've got work to do. Then we'll take care of those two for good. After these messages, we'll be right back. Ronnie, you're gonna get in trouble going on strike against your parents. But it's the only way I'll ever get anyone to listen to me. Why? My dad just took my allowance away because my teacher told him I was throwing spitballs in class today. I didn't do it! But who's gonna believe a kid against a teacher? It's hopeless! Boy, do I know the name of that ten. Trying to convince your parents that you're right and another adult is wrong is about as difficult as flying around the world without an airplane. At least that's what I used to think. But now I've found that if you're truly right and you honestly explain it to your parents, nine times out of ten, they'll understand. Instead of carrying on like this, why don't you talk to your parents and ask for a meeting with your teacher? You know, Ronnie, maybe that'll work. I know I'm right. Go for it, Ronnie. And that's one to grow on. There's a big time day just waiting for you to get ready. You're all right. Getting ready. He should be excited. Go! Ah, I'll crunch you sweet for a complete breakfast. Getting ready. Specially marked boxes of honeycomb. Dave Winfield. An official Sports Illustrated poster. Cool. Stars like Steve Garvey and Sugar Ray. You can get all that. Great. Yeah. Jenny, get the door. It must be Cousin Willie. Okay. Hi. Want some? It's a little blue guy with big ears. He wants to share his Reese's Pieces. Reese's Pieces? Reese's Pieces. Mm, they're real candy with a crunchy candy shell. But, Ma, you gotta see this little blue guy. Look! Cousin Willie. Very funny, Jimmy. Reese's Pieces, peanut butter cream in a candy shell. The taste that's out of this world. <sighs> Adam Hollister's VR helmet. Cybron will be very pleased we found it. <sighs> Man. Grenader sure packs a wallop. Yeah. Hey, fellas, going somewhere? Watch out! What do you think? Could be. Right, it was an illusion. But it gave him time to get away. Ah! Hold it, guys. We're on your side, remember? What is this place? I think I know. It's the ruins of my dad's old lab. This is where he did his research on artificial intelligence. Maybe this has something to do with it. How could you let him get his hands on the helmet? Precisely what you were supposed to prevent. But, Cybron... Enough. Into your chambers. Father, Sky Surfer 1 may not know the significance of the helmet. He'll know. And once Sky Surfer 1 learns how to use it, he's sure to discover my original human identity. We must set a trap for him. Destroy him, so that the knowledge dies with him. We've tried that before, Father. But he always managed to escape. True, but I've long suspected that Sky Surfer 1 is the son of the man who invented the helmet. If that theory proves correct, it shall mean Sky Surfer's undoing. I've never seen a VR helmet like this one before. It's an experimental prototype, something Dad was working on in his spare time before. The explosion? Yeah, I remember it like it was yesterday.
was my 21st birthday. But Dad couldn't get away, so he invited me out to the lab to celebrate. At first, it seemed like everyone in the facility was wiped out. The entire AI research team, the security guards, everyone. Vaporized without a trace. But this may prove once and for all that my father wasn't to blame. You see, it can record images taken directly from the wearer's memory and replay them. Right now, I'm... I'm seeing everything Dad saw that day. It's like I'm right there with him. Jack! Jack, take off the helmet! I... I can't believe it! Jack! Jack! Take off the helmet! There's a call for you on the Digitran monitor. And you'd better take it sitting down. I'm afraid you're in for another shock. He says his name is Adam Hollister. Dad? Hello, son. Dad, after all this time, can it really be you? How? And where have you been? I'll only discuss that with Jack privately. I have evidence against Cybron here, where I've been hiding out. But it's stored on disks that can only be read with the one working prototype of the VR helmet. That one. I want to arrange a meeting, son, and bring the helmet with you. Hang on a second, Dad. I'm telling you, it could be a trap. What if it's not your dad? Yeah, but what if it is my dad? Okay, but we'll track you on the monitor with our Digitrans. This way. Dad, can't we talk first? There's so much to say. Not now, son. We'll talk later. Just follow me. I wish I could say I'm surprised. Ah, let's go! Something's wrong with the Digitrans. Brad, do you read? Nuts, my Digitrans on the blink. You're not half as tough as Cybron thought. <laughs> Running diagnostics. A virus detected. And it spread to all our Digitrans. Only Cybron could have done this. Without the Digitrans, we'll never find Scott. The Jack's got trouble, man. Big time. At last, we meet Scott Servo. Or should I say, Jack Hollister? Don't tell me. Let me guess. I have less than five minutes to live, right? How did you know? I don't think your father likes me. It seems a shame to waste him, father. And he won't be nearly so cute with his brain leaking out of his ears. Couldn't we make use of him instead? Perhaps as a bio-borg? Mm -hmm. An interesting idea, Serena. Very well. But his memory and the threat it poses to me must be obliterated. Observe. The memory monitor will visualize Sky Surface recollections as they are erased from his mind, so that we can be sure the threat is wiped out. The cops closed your case today, Dad. They said you planted a bomb. Can you believe it? To cover up your crime. They claim you were trying to steal the artificial intelligence brain. The one you worked all your life to develop. But something went wrong. You supposedly got caught in your own blast. That's right. It was like he had a computer for a brain. The cops didn't see any connection between the accident and this guy, Cybron. But I'm sure Cybron's brain is what my dad was working on. A computer that thinks for itself. I know you were framed, Dad. And I'll prove it. I swear it. Police won't help me. So maybe, maybe I should adopt another identity. Well, Mr. Hollister, your career with the Sky Surfer Strike Force has come to an end. Well, 
I've managed to debug my own Digitrans. But if Sky's still disabled, how do we find him? It's obvious. The VR helmet. The power pad gives off an electromagnetic field. Maybe I can home in on that frequency. saving the city's sky surface. I'm just sorry you lost the helmet and the chance to uncover who Cybron really is. Yes, all I recall of what the helmet showed me was that shadowy figure with a strange flash of light on its chest. And that's the only clue we've got to Cybron's identity. And for now, that'll have to be enough. Another action-packed lineup from Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming your way. I'm an anteater, and when I see an ant, I give a little inhale, like this. <laughs> Believe me, it's no fun being an anteater. I'd rather be a banker and have a businessman's lunch. Instead, I have to catch things like him. I'm an ant, and he's an anteater. And you know what an old ant does when he sees an anteater? He, he runs for his life, man. <laughs> As I was saying, maybe I should have been a banker. Aha! 
I got her. First, I'll give him a smack, and then I'll have a little snack. <laughs> if I had listened to my mother, I'd have been a radio announcer. <laughs> Somebody spilled some delicious sweet sugar all over the ground. Some lucky ant's gonna have a feast. You know, if I didn't fall for this, it would break old Claude's heart. My, my, now, now look at all this delicious sugar. Uh-oh, there's a big old rock in the way. Lucky for me, an ant can lift a hundred thousand times his own weight. Kind of makes a fella proud. <laughs> Maybe I should have been a doctor. <laughs> then I could prescribe myself a pill. <laughs> ah, it looks like I'm gonna need some help with this. Hey, pal, how's about give me a hand here? I'll do better than that. I'll give you a hand with a big club in it. Aw, oh, thanks, pal. I never could have made it without you. <laughs> now, I just know old Ben's up to something. I better move to Sand Hill so he don't trip over it and hurt himself. to get back to my pad and close the trap door. Never know, it just might rain. <laughs> this end remover is just a thing. I'll remove him from his house and into a better neighborhood. My stomach! That end got half of what I got. He's in big trouble. <laughs> Pow! Uh huh. Success at last. <laughs> hey, Ant, what do you think of that? I know what I think of that but I shouldn't say it in public. <laughs> You're probably wondering what I'm gonna do with this shot put. Well, I'll show you. plan never fails, especially when you're trying to catch an ant that's hooked on sugar. Ah, oh, looks like old Sam's at it again. Well, I might as well play along with him. I got a bite, but I'll let him run a little till he gets tired out, then I'll yank him in. <laughs> Okay, Ed, this is the end of the line. Well, now that's life, and how sweet it is. <laughs> Stop 
happen before he eats the whole show? Now return to Mighty Orbots. This is the planet Athena, a beacon of culture and science in the dark night of space. And one of the primo night spots in the galaxy. Sovereign Saturn, what's that? Shungta, pickled forebrain of Centauron slugwort. Oh, Rob, how many times have I told you never to order in an alien language? You're a nice fellow, but you should quit trying to be dashing and debonair like the Orbot's commander. <sighs> You're always so fascinated by the Orbot's commander. I'll bet he's not as noble as you think he is. Ah! Dear, are you all right? I... I think so. Look! It's... Mighty Orbots? This is impossible. I happen to know that the Orbots are on rest leave. Resting now. I'd hate to see them worked up. Come on! We've got to save that tower. Wait here, Rob. I'll get reinforcements from headquarters. Rob! What's going on? Oh, no. Mighty Orbots is out of control. You know that, and I know that. But it looks like they don't. Hang on. I'm activating the chest doors. Whoa. The chest doors didn't open. Tell me about it. Don't you see? That means that robot isn't Mighty Orbots. Then who is it? I don't know. But we're gonna find out. The destructive robot rampages across the galaxy, attacking one world after another. And at Galactic Patrol Headquarters on Earth, Rondu makes the toughest decision of his career. All units, bring in Mighty Orbot. <laughs> Meanwhile, on the robot vacation world of Sandia, the Orbots are enjoying their vacation. How much? Five credits. for the 
the chips, not the stab. <laughs> Tor, would you like me to spread some Nova Tan oil on you? Yeah. <laughs> she made me do it, Tor. <laughs> We've got trouble, Orbots. Someone's out to wreck our reputation. Let me guess. Is it him? He's wrecking the automated weather station. We've got to stop him. Orbots, unite! Okay, Orbots, let's kick Chrome. Huh? We went right through him. He's giving us a cold shoulder, all over. What's happening? Those temperature extremes have knocked our systems out of whack. Only one thing to do. Orbots, separate! Put the cuffs on him, gang. Hands up, Buster! Oh! Well, I had him. I got it. Okay, everybody. Jump him! Starting Monday, coordination drills! Come on, he's getting away! Not so fast. You're under arrest. Let's see what's going on, Ono. What's this all about, dear? The Galactic Patrol has warrants for the arrest of the Orbots. What? There's nothing we can do. The law is the law. We'll go quietly. You mean they'll go quietly. We only have warrants for them, not you two. We both know the Orbots are innocent, but it's up to you to prove it. The Orbots are taken back to Earth as prisoners. And Rob goes to see Rondu. The Orbots are innocent, Rondu, and you know it. Listen carefully, you two. There are things you need to know. While on a distant asteroid... Draconis, agent of shadow, steps from the chest chamber. Report, Draconis. Your plan has worked perfectly, Lord Umbra. Mighty Orbots has been arrested for the crimes which Tobor, your robot, committed. Excellent. 
Winter War strikes again, it shall be as an agent of shadow. Remove the disguise. That night at a secret galactic patrol tribunal, the Orbots stand trial. Father, uh, your, your honor, you must believe me. Something is dreadfully wrong. Thank you for your testimony, dear. You may step down. The next witness is the Orbots commander. Rob, clear this mess up. Have you any testimony to bring before this tribunal? I have, Your Honor. The Orbots have turned evil. They rebelled against my commands and went on a rampage. I can't believe my sound circuits. Rob, how could you? My fellow judges, have you reached a verdict? Guilty. 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 You have been found guilty of treason against the United Planets. This court sentences you to 999 years of hard labor on Devil's Asteroid. Stay right here. We'll be back after these messages. You can pretend the evil Psykill has sent two new renegade Gobots to trap the Guardians. Gobots sold separately. Look over the air, Zero. Tux, I'm picking up Leader One on my radar. Renegade. Look, stop to the rescue. Take this, Tux and Zero. Glad you dropped in, Flip Top. Gobots. Tux, Zero, Flip Top, and New Leader One each sold separately. New from Tonka. We now continue with Mighty Orbots. This is Devil's Asteroid, the most heavily fortified prison planet in the galaxy. Go straight ahead. Abandon hope, all ye who enter here. Cheery. Welcome to Devil's Asteroid. I am your Commandant, Draconis, and we're going to be spending a long time together. A very long time indeed. Wait a minute. What is Draconis, a shadow agent, doing on Devil's Asteroid? For an answer, let's go to Galactic Patrol Headquarters. You were right about the Orbots, Commander Rob. He's not as noble as I thought. I never thought he would betray the Orbots. Oh, well, maybe there's some mistake. Rob, I need you and Ono in my office. Uh, Dia, I, uh... I'm okay, Rob. Please go. Uh, sorry I have to leave now, Dia. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Okay, Rondu. Why did you have me frame the Orbots? Because they had to infiltrate Devil's Asteroid. It's been taken over by shadow agents who are using a double of mighty Orbots. Then why didn't we tell them? Because I knew Shadow would use a mind scan on them to read their thoughts. If the Orbots knew our plan, Shadow would know it also. Couldn't we have let Dia know? Sorry, Rob. The fewer who know, the better. Anyway, they won't be there for long. You'll see to that. Meanwhile, on Devil's Asteroid, Draconis is keeping our heroes busy. <laughs> hmm. 
<sighs> Splendid. Now move all the others. How much longer? Oh, quite a while, I'm afraid. The replacement parts we've ordered won't be here for another century. Ta-ta! <laughs> Please, I'm stuffed. Stuffed? How unfortunate. Since you've got 999 years to go as our power generator. Finish the breakfast dishes. Now you can do the lunch dishes. <gasps> I'm giving you the easy job tending my flower garden. Whoa! Don't forget to water the ivy. <laughs> Let me go! You bitch! But all isn't totally hopeless. Dia is determined to prove the Orbot's innocence. Let's see. The planets attacked were all in the same sector. What's within range of them all? Devil's Asteroid! Rob and Ono thread their way through the satellite field and enter the prison asteroid. A short time later, Dia also approaches the Devil's Asteroid. Halt. Inside Galactic Patrol Ship. Why were you? Because I captured it, Lobster Breath. Now take me to your commander. With Orbot's confined Draconis, we can begin phase two of Operation Topor. Use Topor to destroy Galactic Patrol headquarters. Here. Wait, wait. Wrong. Here, wait, you. I heard what I came to hear. Stop her. Bringing Tobor back will prove Mighty Orbot's innocence. <laughs> Prepare my cruiser. We must stop him. Dia calling Galactic Patrol. Come in, Father. Come in. Drat. I smashed the subspace antenna when I punched through the roof. Meanwhile, Boo's garden is acting quite contrary. Rob! Oh, no! I knew you wouldn't let us down. Follow me. I know where all the others are. A prison break! It's about time! Boy, am I glad to see you guys. The 
Terminators are escaping! Orbots, unite! Ignition, Ono! Okay, let's go! Uh-oh! Not even Mighty Orbots can break through the prison space lock! I guess I was wrong. So you guys had to be sent to Devil's Asteroid to trick Umbra into using his giant robot again. Rondu calling Mighty Orbots. The Shadow Robot is approaching Earth. I've got to figure out a way to make this radio work, or Mighty Orbots will think I'm attacking them. Tobor automatically defends itself. I can't stop it from attacking Mighty Orbots. You're trapped, Mighty Orbots. What in the galaxy is that? You will find out in a moment. <laughs> It won't be that easy, my dear. <gasps> oh! Dear, give up, mighty Orbots, or else. Okay, Bo, let's put a little heat under his feet. <laughs> She won't. Use your telekinesis to activate the cruiser engines. Topo has been deactivated. Work, mighty Orbots. I should have known you had a plan to capture Tobor. Forgive me. That's okay. For a while, I was wondering whose side I was on. Once again, truth and justice prevail. The Orbots are acquitted, and all's right with the world. We're sorry we thought you sold us out, Rob. So we made this cake for you. Yay! <laughs> made a mess. Now you get in there and clean it up. Boy, I didn't realize how easy we had it on Devil's Asteroid. Stay right there, another action-packed lineup of Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming up next.
wild disaster has dogged the footsteps of our heroes in their search for mooseberries, the missing ingredient for their rocket fuel. First of all, they found that the one mooseberry bush was strictly off limits due to the mooseberry blight. And then finally, Bullwinkle's clever plan to make a swimming raid on the island went slightly awry when he neglected just one little detail. I can't swim! A moment later, Bullwinkle had disappeared over thundering falls. As Rocky raced toward the falls, those sly spies, Boris and Natasha, watched from a distance. Is Moose kaput, darling? No. Look there. He's caught in bush. Not for long. Do we try to save him or let him go? Uh, which was last orders from headquarters? You took message, darling. But they sent so many. Quickly, get me central control. But while Boris and Natasha tried to get their orders on whether or not to go to Bullwinkle's aid, the intrepid squirrel was already high in a tree next to the falls, carrying a long rope which he tied to a tree limb. Bullwinkle, can you hear me? I can hear you, but I can't see you. I'm up in this tree. You sure picked a fine time for sightseeing. No, wait. I'm going to glide down with a rope. Okay. And the plucky squirrel trailing the rope behind him launched himself into space. Down he zoomed across the face of Thundering Falls and right to Bullwinkle. Nice flying rock. But at that instant, the bush tore loose. Hang on, Bullwinkle! And with great exertion of mighty moose muscle, Bullwinkle did hang on as he, Rocky, and the bush swung back to the safety of the shore. Oh, made it! Were you scared, Bullwinkle? Shucks, no! I was as cute as a cucumber, Rocky. Uh, Bullwinkle, I'm over here. That's the bush you're talking to. Imagine me not knowing my best friend from the mooseberry bush. Bullwinkle? Hmm? Say that again. All right. Hmm? No, before that. You said this was a... Just a mooseberry. Mooseberry! Bullwinkle, you did it! You found the last available mooseberry bush in the country. Just my keen eyeballs, I guess. Meanwhile, the two spies had just contacted their superiors overseas. I tell you, I sent whole tank full of rocket fuel by submarine to main seaport. Well, now it's missing. The tank or the rocket fuel? The seaport. Oh... So now I kill Moose, right? No, you idiot. Get the formula and return home. We got special reception planned for you. Okay, over and out. Now we gotta get this bush back to Washington, Bullwinkle. Yeah, before it catches the Mooseberry Blade. But at last we got the secret ingredient. Secret ingredient? Come on, Rocky, let's start hiking. Hold on there, gentlemen. Who are you? Special Agent FPI. You mean FBI? No, FPI. Federal Plant Inspector. You got any peaches, pears, pineapples, passion fruit, papayas, or mooseberries? Well, it just so happens. Aha, a mooseberry bush. And uh, he's crawling with mooseberry blight. It is? This plant must be sprayed right away, quick. Now, wait a minute, you can't... There's no charge. Oh, that's all right, then. So the inspector sprayed and sprayed until not a thing could be seen. <laughs> And when the cloud cleared away, both the bush and the inspector were gone. Boy, that's what I call a powerful spray. Well, what has happened to our mooseberry bush? And does this mean failure to our friends? Heck no! We're the heroes! Don't miss our next episode, The Inspector Detectors, or A Kick in the Plants! <laughs> Just enough left to tell him who the sponsor was. You got the credits, Bullwinkle? All on this itty bitty card. Ooh.
land of precious ore, the carrion rush brought outlaws by the score. to New Texas. This town is not being run properly, Mr. Mayor. Look at the marshal back there. He's sleeping on the job. Intolerable. <laughs> now, just a carrion picking minute, Mr. Ambassador. If it weren't for Marshal Bravestar, Tex Hex would make things plenty hot around here. Tex Hex can hardly be as dangerous as you claim, Mayor Derringer. Planetary marshals are needed where there is a real danger. But, 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 but Mr. Ambassador, I'll have Marshal Bravestar removed as soon as I make my report to the Planetary Command. Ah, uh, here comes the thistle down. Finally. <laughs> there she is! The biggest, most heavily armed carrium freighter in the galaxy! will be most lots carry him we ever got. <laughs> you weasel weasel, this ain't no stick up. This is a big time. If I get that beaked ambassador in my hands, the whole planetary union will have to do what I say. <laughs> you vomits ready to ride. Mr. Ambassador, please reconsider. We need Brave Star. My mind is made up, Mayor. New Texas has no need of a planetary marshal. Now, I must get aboard the ship to recharge my air tank. My breathing atmosphere will run out soon. What's that? Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh-oh, here comes trouble. So here I go. Activate the defenses, Fuzz. Tex Hex is coming. Um, um, uh, Mayor, what's going on here? Great galaxy! I've got to protect the ambassador!
our hands full, big partner. Ears of the wolf. The wolf. The wolf. All time. Dingoes, take care of Green Star. The rest of you, follow me. We're gonna get that ambassador. So that's their plan. We gotta stop. <laughs> Partner, back to town. Quit playing around. I never get to have any fun. Oh, well. Tex, they shut him, hatch door. That's okay. We're gonna make our own door. Good. Last one. <gasps> Sandstorm! A little sleepy dust, please. Oh, sleepy, huh? Yeah. Must sound alarm. This door is locked, too. You got the key, Thunderstick. Sure, sure, do. Spread out and take over the ship. Ten magnetons of carrium to whoever captures that goosehead ambassador. <laughs> Oh, no. Quick, Ambassador. Well, we've got to keep you out of Tex Hex's clutches until... Until what? My breathing gas will run out in an hour? Until Brave Star can get us out of here. Brave Star. <laughs> I'd hate to have to count on him. Don't count on him. <laughs> Tex Hex will give us ten megatherms that carry them each for this haul. Brave Star! Tex Hex is up there with the Ambassador and Derringer. Out of reach. We've got to get to that ship and stop Tex Hex before it's too late. It's already too late, Marshal. Taking the thistle down, one, two, three. All orders to planetary command come from me. <laughs> as long as he's got the ambassador, planetary command will have to do what he says. I think we got a problem. This trouble, Shaman. I know. I saw Tex Hex capture the freighter and the Signian ambassador. We've got to get on that freighter. Can your magic get me aboard, old friend? I will try. We did it! <laughs> <laughs> All right. You beat Brave Star this time, Master. <laughs> I sure did. Long as I got the ambassador, them varmints have to do whatever I say. <laughs> Still think Tex Hex is harmless, Ambassador? Brave Star! Mm, are you ready, Brave Star? I am. Then let it begin. Mm. 
feels funny like, sort of thick somehow, as though I could mm, walk on it. And so you can always remember belief can build bridges. Our thanks, shaman. Come on, 3030, let's ride. <laughs> Carrium doesn't surrender. He's a gone bird. You hear me? Keep it quiet, Big Bard. He thinks we're still down in the town. Surrender, or the ambassador's gonna stop you breathing! <laughs> that monster! JP, do you read me? Bravestar, thank goodness. Where are you? I'm right above you. Throw me a line. We need your help. Coming right up, Marshal. Got it. Now, hang on! You hear me, Brave Star? <laughs> the alarm! It's the Marshal and that blasted judge sneaking aboard. Thunderstick! Viper! Sandstorm! Strength of the Bear! Yeah. Playtime! <laughs> we better split up, partners. You two knock out the energy to the ship's weapons. And I'll take care of Hex. Oh, how is your breathing supply holding out? <laughs> Not much left. If your friend Bravestar doesn't find a way to get us out of here soon. Bravestar always finds a way. But look, Tex, Hex, and his men have gone. We're alone. How is that going to help us? We can't move. Don't be so sure. Thunderstick was careless. He forgot to take away my stun pistol. It worked. Sure did. Now, now, let's get those chains off. We have got to find some atmosphere for you. You look tired. Have a little sleepy dust. No. Getting sleepy. <laughs> Looks like dream time for Judge Woman. Not quite. of those two. <clears throat> you okay, JB? Oh, oh, I'm still weak <sighs> from the sleepy dust, but I have to find the ship's energy supply and turn it off. Well, you're too weak and, and I, I, I can't move. Looks like it's up to you, Mr. Ambassador. Uh, me? But I have to find my breath supply. On this planet, we all have got to help out when needed. Please! We came here to help you. Now we need your help. I'll do my best. Mmm. That weapon should be right down here somewhere. Oh, now you're done. You hit me when I weren't looking. And that makes me mad! My atmosphere almost out, but I must keep going. The energy room is 
just ahead. Tex Hex should be around here somewhere. Ah, there he is. Looks like one of my pards got to your ray cannon power supply, Hex. And now it's your turn. Uh, that's what you think, Brain Star. Yeah! Yeah! The ship's still mine, Marshal, and I've got the ambassador on board. Hex is taking the ship. Just one chance to stop him. And I better be ready. Now, strength of the bear! What? No! That was a thing, damn it! Oh, oh. Uh, this has definitely not been my day. No thanks required. You saved our lives when you pulled the plug on tex -X's power supply. Well, the Thistledown's been repaired, Mr. Ambassador. We apologize for the delay in your travel. But I hope you can see why we need Brave Star on this planet. I do now. In fact, my adventure here on New Texas has taught me a valuable lesson about thinking before I act. I was foolish and very wrong to decide so quickly and with so little evidence that you didn't need a marshal. Well, we sure do. Yes, and no matter what I said before, Brave Star's the right man for the job. You know, it takes a lot of courage to admit making a mistake. I admire you for that, Mr. Ambassador. And if you're ever in this quadrant of the galaxy again, drop by and see us. <clears throat> you hear? No thanks. I've had enough excitement for one star year. <laughs> I'm going to go back to my nice, quiet, boring planetary coast. Goodbye. Gee, good thing he didn't come by during one of our busy days, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Today's story was about teamwork. Teamwork means many people working together to get something done. Teamwork is important because often the job that needs to be done is too big or too dangerous for one person to do alone. Recapturing the carrium freighter was a big job and a dangerous one. But because everyone worked together, we managed to do it. That's teamwork. Try it next time you and your friends have a big job to do. You might be surprised at how well it works.
Stay tuned, another action-packed lineup of Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming your way. Pimento University. Pimento U. Good old P.U. Pimento U, oh sweet P.U. Thy fragrant odor scents the air. A pox on Yale, poo, poo, Purdue. Pimento U, my college fair. Oh sweet P.U. Out and away, the most popular fellows at, uh... <clears throat> Out and away, the most popular fellows at old P.U. are the three Dover boys. Tom, the fun-loving member of the trio. Dick, a serious lad of 18 summers, plus a winter in Florida, as related in the Dover boys in the Everglades. And uh, Larry, the youngest of the three jerks, uh, uh, brothers. A gay outing at the park has been planned by the merry trio, and they are off to fetch their fiancée, dainty Dora Standpipe, at Miss Cheddar's Female Academy close by. With their usual punctuality, the boys arrive at the pointed hour of three. Soon on their rollicking way, forced to pass a certain public house, a tavern of unsavory repute, our young friends meet the distressing situation with their usual uncompromising moral fortitude. They know that even now, within this very tavern, Dan Backslide, the former sneak of Rookford Hall, coward, bully, cad, and thief, and arch enemy of the Dover Boys, squanders his misspent life. Hark! The Dover Boys. Dread them. Double dread them. They are escorting Dora Standpipe. Dear rich Dora Standpipe, how I love her! Father's money. Confound those Dover boys! Oh, how I hate them! I hate Tom! I hate Dick! And I hate Larry! They drive me to drink! <laughs> Found them. <coughs> Con! Found them! But let us draw the curtain on this sordid scene and turn to more pleasant surroundings, where we find our young friends engaged in a spirited game of hide, go, and uh, seek. 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. 45, 50, 55. No, no! In here! No, up here, up here! No, no, over here, over here! Over here, in here! No, no, in here! No, in here! Over 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 here, no, over here, 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 over
Will no one come to her assistance? But hold on. What's this? It looks like an alert young scout. And that's just what it is. He'll not fail her, I'll venture. Telegram for the Dover, boys. Mrs. Tom, Dick, and Larry, care away with Tavern Upper Bottleneck, New York. Sirs, quote, help! Unquote. Signed, Dora. 35 cents collect. Unhand her, Dan Backslide. Unhand her, Dan Backslide. Unhand her, Dan Backslide. Hey, we're getting in a rut. Stand up and fight, you coward, bully, cat, and thief. Oh, you haven't been thrashed enough yet, eh? And now it is time to say goodbye. Goodbye. Cops. Central organization of police specialists. Fighting crime in a future time. Protecting Empire City from Big Boss and his gang of crooks.
case of Berserko's big surprise. Cops file 98004, the most chaotic caper of our career. This near disaster for Empire City began when the big boss's manservant, Squeaky Clean, paid a surprise visit to Berserko's secret hideout. Here's how the caper came down. to throw a surprise party for him. Here's a shopping list. It tells you exactly what to buy. Balloons, onion dip, birthday cake. I'm ready to come down now, Berserko. All uh, right. Daddy! $10,000 I took out of petty cash. <laughs> I hope it's enough. More than enough? Why spend money? We're crooks. Let's steal some party favors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I want the bug eye monster and the walrus and the fish head and the skeleton. That'll be four hundred dollars. Thanks for shopping at Partyville, home of the world's largest balloon. Where are these masks? He won't know who's robbing the place. <laughs> A criminal genius. That's what I am. You're joking, right? Thank you, officer. Maybe you can help us identify the suspects from our mug file. I can't believe they just robbed my store wearing masks. I just sold them. There's only one crook mindless enough to pull a stunt like that. Berserko. That's him. He's the one who stole the world's largest balloon! And I want it back! No, 
noisemakers, balloons, onion dip. Sounds to me like the Zirko's throwing a party. Hey, this could be our chance to nab all the crooks in one place. Hmm. If this shopping list is accurate, the next thing Berserko plans to steal is a birthday cake. Call an All Points Bulletin. We'll check every bakery in town. to Bulletproof. The suspects are heading south on the waterfront. I'm in disguise and in pursuit. Forget! The surprise party starts in a few hours! Uh, we, we didn't forget! We just didn't know what to get him! Well, he is hard to buy for. And what do you get for the boss who's stolen everything? What doesn't Uncle Big Boss have? Welcome to the afternoon edition of Empire News. Today's big local news the grand opening of Empire City's Cornucopia Bridge. Hmm! The ribbon-cutting ceremony will begin at 3 o'clock this afternoon. Mayor Davis will be on hand to do the honors. He doesn't have a bridge! You, you can't steal a bridge! It's, it's impossible! You're talking to the guy who just stole the world's largest balloon! Fellas. 
after these messages. We'll be right back. The crooks, that cop's gotta know who they are. That's the rock rusher. No jail can hold them. And here's Berserko, a dangerous street punk. Meanwhile, at the crooks hideout. Look out for long arms. He's a tough street cop. Sergeant Mace, the SWAT team leader. And Bulletproof's a federal agent. Give up, you crooks. You're surrounded by the cops. Ah! Cops and crooks sold separately with cash. of the big chase. Officer Roadblock grabbed a squad car to stop Cuckoo before he got away. That's the barricade! And Officer Taser brought the paddy wagon to blast ah. Hyena. Ah. Cop, squad car, and paddy wagon sold separately with Cap. Look! Teddy caught us a spy! Yeah, that's right. I am a spy. The big boss sent me. Oh, no! If the big boss finds out about the party, he won't be surprised. Don't worry, Squeaky. The big boss will be surprised. Just you wait and see. Come on, you're gonna help us steal a bridge. Don't be late for the party. You wouldn't want to miss the cake. It is with great pleasure that I stand before you today at the inaugural celebration of Vampire City's latest architectural wonder. When it comes Why the it, banana straitjacket, so Berserko? So you'll stay put. I don't want you spoiling the big boss's surprise. But maybe I can help you steal the bridge. Why don't you let me in on the plan? What? And spoil your surprise? And so, without further ado, I officially open the Cornucopia Bridge and dedicate it to the citizens of Empire City. <laughs> About time! I thought that old windbag had never shut up. Mirage hasn't checked in since she spotted the suspects. It's a total disaster! Mayor Davis, what happened? Pretty neat, huh? So you inflated the world's largest balloon. Big deal! What do you mean, big deal? That balloon's gonna fly this baby to the big boss in time for the party! Be 
Big Boss will be here any minute. Everyone got their noisemakers? Hey! Shh! I hear someone coming. A surprise party. Well, you shouldn't have. Well, all right. Now, uh, what did you get me? I think you better ask Berserko. Okay, where is my numbskull nephew anyway? He's out stealing the cornucopia bridge. The what? The cornucopia bridge. Your birthday present. Berserko, you nitwit! Sounds like Uncle Big Boss! Nah, I must be hearing things. In a few seconds, this bridge will be floating on air! Not at this rate, it won't. Who taught you to wire explosives, anyway? Well, if you're so smart, do it yourself! Oof. Somebody peel me out of this banana skin. <laughs> Better not try anything funny, Smarty Pants. I'm watching you. Cops! Come on, Banana Brain! Hurry it up! Fireworks. This might be just the thing to crash Berserko's party. out what's going on down there? Berserko's in a celery suit, and there's enough TNT on that bridge to blow up half of Empire City. Let's be careful. It's Mirage. She wants us to stall for time. What is that nut trying to do? It looks like that nut's trying to blow that bridge off its support so we can fly it away! What? Is that possible? Of course not. But he might hurt a lot of people trying. Well, let's get him! Mace! We wait for Mirage. She has the situation under control. Get a move on! We're gonna be late for the big boss's surprise party! Okay, bright boy, it's all yours. This is gonna be a hysterical moment. Don't you mean historical? Yeah, that too. Mr. Bubble Berserko, but I'm a cop, and you're under arrest. Aww! Just when I was gonna invite you to the party! Ah! Ah! Huh? Berserko! He's gone! Time to clear the bridge! No, Mace. Huh? As cops, we're obligated to return stolen property to its rightful owners. The 
Crooks that attempted to steal the cornucopia bridge were sentenced to jail. After an exhaustive search, Berserker was officially declared missing. File 98004, the case of Berserko's big surprise. Case closed. Cops, roll call, highway, mainframe, long arm, Bowser and Blitz, sundown, hardtop, mirage, bullseye, mace, barricade, and they call me bulletproof. These are Empire City's most wanted crooks. Berserko. Rock Crusher. Misdemeanor. Turbo Two-Tone. Dr. Bad Vibes. Nightshade. Use caution in apprehending. Stay tuned, another action-packed lineup of Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming your way. I do love to spend my little old vacation at the beach. Yes, sir. This is what I call scenery. Uh-oh, here comes trouble. It's that nasty old anteater. I detect the odor of an ant. And I think he's on my trail. The beach is the last place to find an ant. But my nose is long, and it's never wrong. See what I mean? I'm right. And I'm gone. <laughs> No use hiding in the sand, Ant. These sand hooks of mine will soon uncover you. All right, wise guy, what's a big idea? Would you believe I was looking for an ant? I think you're looking for a punch in the nose. No time to argue. Slow down, Ant. You'll run off all your fat. What's the matter, stupid? Can't you read? No dogs allowed on the beach without a leash. So, who's a dog? You're a dog. Whoever saw a dog with a long nose like this? You're a schnauzer. Off the beach! I wish I was a dog. I'd bite him. These wooden spoons sure make good surfboards. A simple apology. Off the beach. Now beat it. Well, if that's the way you want it. Did 
Did you ever see such a stupid seagull? I said off the beach! You know, I got half a mind to sue. How do you like that? That was my lawyer. Uh-oh, here he comes again. He just never gives up. It's lucky I think of everything. For the last time. Off the beach! No dogs permitted on the beach without a leash. Come along, Fifi, darling. Hmm, without a leash. But with a leash. We'll go down to the water and wet our little footsie. All right, you precious little doll baby, come on. <laughs> I'll teach you to attack my poor helpless little Fifi girl. Oh, you horrible old bitches creature. Take that. I love to build sand castles in the sand. It isn't everybody who can build a sand castle and move into it. Come out, Aunt, or I'll hoof and I'll puff and I'll kick the heck out of your castle. Time's up. like the only way to see the sea is join the Navy. Hello? Give me the dog catcher. But I'm not a dog. I'm an oddbok. I've always been an oddbok. An oddbok, do you hear? An oddbok! Oh, what a lovely day I had. I think I'll come tomorrow. But I tell you, fellas, it's the truth. I am a dog. I'm a funny looking dog. Listen. Woof, woof. You hear that? I'm one of you. I'm a dog. Hey, Ant, do me a favor. Tell these dogs I'm a dog. Don't let them kid you, fellas. You ought to know a cat when you see one. <laughs> Boy, I'll never ask an ant for a small favor. Flake can't handle the truth. You're not a real ultra. You're just a hired gun in a cyber suit. We are supposed to be a team here. Remember? Morning, Malibu Zoo. Jimmy, 
for you, Proto. It's your mother. <sighs> Unbelievable. Mom, you okay? What's wrong? We've got trouble in the neighborhood, Jimmy. Trouble? What kind of trouble? There are strange things happening to the people here. I'm scared, Jimmy. Please come home. Okay, Mom. I'm on my way. Oh, did Mommy tell Jimmy he couldn't come out to play? Is everything all right? Hey, Prototype, where are you going? What do you care? I'm not an Ultra, you aren't my family, and I'm out of here. Just what do you think you're doing, Ruiz? I need a holiday, okay? I'm going home. I decide your vacations. An Ultra Tech can't afford to have you running off with our suit. But it's okay to run off with Ultra Force. That's business. You are not going into some slum in Ultra Tech's $50 million suit. Uh, uh. From now on, don't call me. I'll call you. I guess I still miss this place. <gasps> Jimmy, what have they done to you? It's no big thing, Mom. Subdermal implant terminals. They allow the suit to respond to me faster. I worry about you, Jimmy. I know, Mom. So what's going on? I... I can't explain it, Jimmy. Your friends, they... What, Mom? What? Something has changed them. Something evil. I don't know what's going on around here, but I'm not leaving till I do. <laughs> Check the spaceman, bro. Hector, is that you? Man, what happened to you? What's it to you, Ruiz? Come on, homie. What's up with all the muscles? You ain't no homie to me. Hell oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah. You okay? You been hit? No, man, he's just zooking out. He'll be okay. What? Whoa, man. What's going on? Hey, what is that stuff? It's just a zook pod. Relax. Just a zook pod? I saw what it did to you. Yeah, well, it makes you feel good. So it, like, buffs you out, okay? Makes you look like you want to look. What's wrong with that? And what about those punks trying to smoke you in broad daylight? Those are Marcello's guys. We're on his turf. Marcello? Yeah. He lost his cool when the pump moved in on him. The pump? That's the dude that fronts us the zoo. Don't tell me you guys are slinging for this pump guy. Back off, Ruiz. You leave home and grab the brass ring. You don't get to come back and shoot your mouth. Yeah, yeah I guess. Yeah, that's right. Definitely. Yeah. Go back to Hollywood where you belong, ultra hero. I'm here to see Marcello. Get lost, kid. I said I want to see Marcello now. Get lost. Ugh. Whoa. It's okay, Big Joey. Jimmy Ruiz, isn't this a nice surprise? Come in. Oh. What brings you back here? Zook. Zook? What's that? Don't give me that. I saw what you did to Hector. Oh, look, Ruiz, I know all about you and Ultra Tech, and I think we can help each other out. What's that, some guy in a Halloween mask? Huh. I wish. Listen, that's no mask. This guy is pure evil. Look, Jimmy, I need you to do something. You take out the pumpkin for me, and I'll get you your neighborhood back. Marcello, I just heard Jimmy. What are you doing here? Rita, I could ask you the same question. your offer. 
I'm no hitman. If your boys come down on Hector again, I'll be on you before you can blink. You used to be tight with Jimmy, weren't you? Look, I need him to take out the pump. You make it happen. Whatever you want. For now. Wait! Oh, Jimmy. I thought you'd never come back. Yeah, right. So what did you expect? You're the one that left. I was gonna come back when I had it made. Maybe that was stupid, but my life has changed a lot. Come on, I want to show you something. It's the latest alloy from Ultratech. Just about indestructible. It packs two 300 megahertz plasma blasters. That's for enemy armor. And it has a built-in stealth mode interface. And boot jets with the cruising speed of Mach 2. Impressive. You could take out the pump and Marcello. Easy. Could I try it on? <laughs> I don't think it'll work with anybody but me. These things run the suit's juice through my body. I'll tell you what. I'll put it on to fly you home, okay? Well, well, well. We have a new player in the neighborhood. Hey, you two. This is our street. Come on out or you're gonna be sorry you ever stepped on our turf. Sludge, your department. <gasps> Don't make the pump mad, you little pop. Peck, you. Get away from me, you freak! Go! <laughs> Too bad it isn't permanent. Now, now, pistol. Sludge frightened those boys quite enough. Mm, how much longer we have to wait, Palm? Don't be so anxious. Our friend, Mr. Ruiz, will be here soon. Our watchers saw him leave with Marcello's woman. There. You see, Pistol? Now, that wasn't too long, was it? <laughs> now we can go. I just wanted to confirm that Prototype has formed an alliance with Marcello. I got the Saluki. Salacious. Permit me to anticipate you, my dear Sludge. The solution to a vexing problem. Young Ruiz must be eliminated. <laughs> Are we agreed? Give me the word, Pump, and the eliminating begins. <laughs> Such an eager lad. Oh, Jimmy, I'm so glad you're back. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Call the cops! Hurry! <gasps> Can't breathe! <sighs> Don't move. Help is on the way. <laughs> Why, prototype? I didn't know you cared. After these messages, we'll be right back. Try reach down with his mighty head. Come inside the pages of the Ultra Force comic book. Where Prime and his Ultra Heroes battle on against Enemy and his evil forces. It's Prime time, Enemy. Sire! Sorry, Prime. Evil rules. Get him! Yeah, Prime's getting pounded. Not for long. Cool and Nightmare will nuke you. Oh! Oh! Ultra cool! New Ultra Force action figures each sold separately. New from Galoo. Just the fun of make believe with Chef Boy RD. Mmm, animal shape. Power coaster. You can go anywhere you want to be with Chef Boy RD. Wavy macaroni tastes great. Yeah, and good for us. Tomorrow, ABC's and one, two, threes. Thank goodness.
Zod Monster comes with Laser Lance. Leader One and Psychil each sold separately from Tonka. Oh, what I wouldn't do to get Coco Pebbles from you, no hope. Barney, what are you doing? Break dancing. Anyone who's anyone can break dance. Oh, yeah? Here's the Pebbles Break. Now, Pebbles Break. Here's the Pebbles Steal. Now, Pebbles Steal. The Pebbles Steal. Mm -hmm. Coco wishes. And here's the Pebble Spoon. House Fruity or Coco Pebble Cereal, part of this nutritious breakfast. Yabba dabba delicious. Get him while his helmet's off, Slug. <sighs> you little creep. Who gave you all those weapons? I must humbly huh. confess. It was I, Lord Pumpkin. Was it my lovely orange complexion that gave me away? More like the smell of rotting vegetables. Are you all right, my young protege? No sweat, Pump. Excellent. Should I finish the job? <laughs> Don't you think he's already fished? He's finished the word you're looking for. Let's leave him in peace, or pieces, and see what happens. Jimmy! Jimmy? I gotta find a way to dig that suit out of there. Wow! Are you sure you're all right? That explosion was some kind of electrical thing, like lightning. I'm fine. Well, it's a good thing you had on your suit, or you could have been really hurt. You sound just like Prime. I do fine with or without that suit. I know that. You're the best. I hate it when I hear people say that you couldn't cut it if it weren't for that suit. They do, huh? <gasps> Well, let me tell you something. This is my neighborhood. Me, Jimmy Ruiz, not Prototype. And I'm not letting Marcello or Pumpkin or anybody mess it up. Oh, Jimmy, be careful. The first thing I'm going to do is shut down this zoo business. Now you're mine. I thought I told you to go back to Hollywood, Ruiz. Look, all I want is some information. Dial 411. Come on, Hector. You and me used to be tight. Let me guess. You want to find out about Lord Pumpkin and the Zoop. You want to play Ultra Hero with your Ultra Force friends. No, it's not like that. We like Zook, see? Yeah. 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 Zook. 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 Yeah. Zook. 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 Gonna mess it up. I don't want to hurt you, man. Hurt me? I'm gonna send you home in a toothpaste tube. Oh, man. You all right? Don't tell me I did this. Oh. Jimmy? It was like a shock or something. Guess I was really zooped out. We'll get you help, Hector. I promise. Do you still want to go after the pump? It's all in here. 
Jimmy, watch yourself. <laughs> Life is good, young pistol. <laughs> in the New York sewers. Soup will make this vast city Lord Pumpkin's pie. And you, dear boy, shall always have the biggest and juiciest slice. You really mean that, Paul? <laughs> to paraphrase Shakespeare's Shylock, I am a pumpkin. Have not a pumpkin affections? Yeah? Well, what about me? You said you'd hit <laughs> you did promise him more Zook Pump. Whatever you say, dear boy. Whoa! <laughs> Take ah. care, young pistol. You're too tempting a morsel for the hungry Zook plants. Ah, that's more like it. If you didn't control the Zook, I'd lock you up for a thousand years. Bass Pistol, when Sludge is restored to himself, he's just another tiresome New York City cop. There's nothing tiresome about Jeff Stick. Jostling! Justice! No! Give me more soup! My dear Sludge, you know better. You must first do me a service. <laughs> Here's your chance to earn more Zook, Sludge. I rather thought young Ruiz would come calling. But where's that suit of his? We're dusting the pumpkin. <laughs> Looky here. It's Ruiz, minus the suit. Oh, this is great. Two for the price of one. One minute and counting, boys. No, Marcello, stop! Don't tell me you're still soft on the guy. No, baby. Of course not. It's just... we can use him. His suit. We should find out where he's got it. It's gotta be worth something. Fifty million bucks something. Good idea, baby. We'll search his mom's place after we take care of the pump. Okay, boys. It's smashing pumpkin time! <laughs> Let Ruiz take the brunt of it. <laughs> You might have tried ringing the bell. Wow! Oh dear, dear. And I just finished decorating. I can't have this. Want more souk, my disgusting friend? Earn it. Go after them. Oh, come on. Let me go too, huh? Don't let the big jerk have all the fun.
<laughs> Too bad, Sludge. No zook for you. I found him first. You are ancient history. Nobody ah! says Jimmy Ruiz is history, ah! especially a four foot part like you. chariots, the ram, the tiger, the reindeer, Battle Beat. and in battle transport vehicles that change into battle stations, the beetle, firebird, and shark, Battle Beat. and to carry your army, there's the bandolier, let's battle, boy, fire, fire, beat, boy, Battle Beat, and grow into an army, bandolier, chariots, and transports, each sold separately, Battle Beat. Coming from the farthest reaches of the universe to challenge the worst villains on Earth are the most powerful heroes ever in the Battle of the Superpowers Collection. Hark! Batman being called to stop a dastardly deed? I got you, Joker! Don't laugh yet! Release the wall! It's a trap! Activate Battle Ram! Trouble, Batman? Not my Batmobile! Unleash Phase 2! Is this the end of our heroes in the Batmobile? You decide. Batmobile and Superpowers action figures all sold separately. A wily old cat and a sneaky little mouse continue their age-old quest for survival on the Tom and Cherry Show. The first, new predators for justice are ready to take a bite out of crime. The street sharks are next on 20 Toon Time. Stay tuned, another action-packed lineup of Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming your way. out there. Peabody again. And today we set our sights on the year 1493. The place, Mr. Peabody? Rome, where we'll meet history's most infamous bartender, Lucretia Borgia. In a trice, the Wayback Machine escorted us from my penthouse apartment to the castle of the Lord of Pesaro, Lucretia Borgia's second husband. We found his lordship munching on the leg of a chair. Delicious. Absolutely delicious. Pardon us, Your Grace, but why are you eating that chair? Uh, because I'm hungry. But why the chair? Well, for one thing, it happens to be the only edible piece of furniture in this room. Uh, you see this? Yesterday was a piano. Wouldn't you rather eat a nice, juicy steak? The last person to eat a steak in this castle was a Lucretius first husband. He's dead, you know. We're quite familiar with your wife's uh, reputation. Yeah, one might say she's a poison. <laughs> but I love her anyway. You realize, of course, what a diet of furniture can lead to. Probably a divorce. But as long as my wife handles food and drinks, I must abstain from normal eating habits. Either of you care for a caster? Thank you, no. Yes, I only wish there was someone who could help me. There is. Who? Mr. Peabody. He can do anything. <laughs> Sherman is prejudiced, Your Grace. Prejudiced, but absolutely correct. That night we joined his lordship at dinner. Hey. Lucretia, she gonna be down in a minute. Remember, if you value your life, don't eat or drink. By the way, do either of you carry a blue cross? Before we could answer, the door swung wide and there stood Lucretia. It had to be her. She was carrying a decanter of hemlock. 
Good evening, dear husband. Ah, oh, I see we have a guest. Yes, my love. How nice. Uh, gentlemen, I propose a toast to your health. Without raising suspicion, we managed to empty our glasses in a nearby plant. A nearby dead plant. I hope you enjoy the meal. I prepared it myself. Oh, what happened to the cook? A stomach trouble. As usual, you done it again, Lucretia. This food looks delicious. Uh, you may find it needs a dash of salt. Oh, yes, salt. A-R-S-E-N-I-C, a salt. Lucretia's constitution must have been an iron one. Her food disappeared rapidly. So did ours, from our plates to the floor. Ah, that hit the spot. Would anyone care for a cigar? Well, yes, I think I... Shh, shh, shh. she soaks them. Uh, darling, why you don't take our guests out for a stroll in the night air? It uh, might help you to clear up your headaches. I don't got a headache. And not yet, you don't. Atop a parapet, we discussed the recent ordeal. You see? Hemlock, arsenic, that food was loaded. If I were you, your lordship, I'd leave her. I can't. I love her too much. Besides, this poison thing is just a hobby. I have an idea. One that will allow you to eat and drink quite freely. We adjourned to the castle basement where Lucretia had her own chemistry lab. Look around you. The greatest collection of poisons in the entire world. With Sherman and his lordship assisting, we collected samples. Finally, I began my experiment. Two drops of wood alcohol, a dash of belladonna, Paris green for color. There we are, done. It looks delicious. What is it? This glass contains a minute amount of every poison known to man. And to Lucretia? And to Lucretia. By drinking this, you will build up a lifetime immunity. No matter what poison your wife administers, your system will have become adjusted to it. All right. He is a looking at you, I hope. Congratulations, Your Lordship. You are now immune to poison. From that moment on, his married life changed to one of complete rapture. Uh, you cooking something, my dear? Yes, my love. A cake for your birthday. Ah, ah, ah. Not enough strychnine. You know I like my strychnine. Oh, sorry, my pet. I keep forgetting. Well, Sherman, I think our visit has ended. There's just one thing, Mr. Peabody. And that is? The servants around here. They're not immune to Lucretia's poison. True, but if you'll notice, they go about the castle wearing a plaster patch over their mouths. That way they don't eat, drink, or speak. In fact, Sherman, this may surprise you, but that's how the silent butler came to be. Mission log. Entry 12.7. Jacob Marlowe speaking. I've sent two of the team to investigate suspicious activity at Integer Electronics, a company which specializes in satellite technology. Hurry! We can't afford to be found here. Too late, worm. They're Damonite drones. Every one of them. Carabin pests. Eliminate them. Grab her! 
I am surrounded by amateurs! <gasps> Place will be crawling with security guards. Retreat! Lightning! Don't look! Ah! Are you okay? No! In fact, I would have been better off handling them myself. Ugh. Providence, I am not happy. The mission was a failure. You said the drones would succeed. I said your plan would succeed. This event is but a stone in your path. You can stumble over it, or use it to build a new road. Oh, spare me the metaphors. If the fools had done their job, I'd have this world's most advanced satellites at my command. I could find the orb. You still can. All you need is someone who can gain entry to the satellite ground station. My fellow Americans, as your president, it is my proud... Uh, someone you might say with unimpeachable credentials. Beware the one whose eyes cannot be fooled. Ah, the Caribbean child, Voodoo, yes. Her powers are great, but her spirit is weak. We will take care of her. This is HiSight, the newest generation of U.S. spy satellites. So? That lab the Daemonites attacked is the one that designed the satellite's electronics. This would confirm your theory that Hellspont is searching for something, Jacob. The question is, what? I had hoped to interrogate the Daemonites, but they were allowed to escape. I was trying to help you. If you cannot defend yourself, you are of no use in battle. Sister's got a point, kid. If you can't carry your own weight, you're gonna get left behind. Well, fine. I'm used to being left behind. <laughs> Voodoo! Wait! Don't you know how important Voodoo is to our mission? Of course. And that is why she must improve her combat skills. Don't you guys realize? Voodoo's an orphan. Her whole life she's been rejected and abandoned. Nice going with that left behind crack. Hey, who knew? What? Hey! Well, next time, think before you mouth off. We're all she's got. <laughs> Sorry. I would figured I'd find you here. Yeah. Madame Ordesky's school of dance. Be a star. This was the last place I felt at home. I should have known better. But you do have a home. What about the Wildcats? All they did was turn my life upside down. I don't belong there. I don't belong anywhere. I've never had a real family. And it looks like I never will. Hey, this is addressed to me. Ordesky's School of Dance. Attention Priscilla Catain. That's your old name. <gasps> Maul, I, I, I gotta go. Voodoo, wait. Voodoo? It's me. I... what are you doing? Like Zealot said, I am of no use. So I am out of here. And don't try to talk me out of it. Man, you are as stubborn as the day we met. You are already at the dance school. Trying to study for my high school equivalency at night. Oh, thanks. I was sure I was gonna fail. You wouldn't let me, though. See these? He gave them to me after our first tutoring session. Hey, I couldn't afford to pay you. I can't believe you kept them. Pris, please don't go. Maul, I gotta do this. For me. See this letter? It's from a private eye in Florida. He was hired to find me by my parents. But I thought your parents... Abandoned me when I was a baby. I can never be sure. The orphanage burned down, so there weren't even any records. Promise you won't tell the others where I went. I'm going to find my real family, and I'm not letting anyone stop me. Not even you. Okay, Voodoo. I won't tell. Thanks. Good luck, pal. I hope you find what you're looking for.
Jacob, I am sensing elevated blood pressure. Are you upset? The wild cats are acting like brats. I can't figure out what Hellspont's up to, and I didn't sleep. Why should I be upset? Perhaps because Voodoo has left headquarters without permission. <coughs> what? Or because I am now registering strong Daemonite energy readings near the UN <coughs> Plaza. Any other cheerful news you want to share? Yes. The President of the United States is scheduled to give a speech this morning at the UN. Great Scott! What's with the wake-up call? And where's Voodoo? I'd like to know that myself. Void, get us to the UN, now. Without Voodoo to ID the bug boys, this will not be easy. Here comes the president. There, are those the drones? Yeah, unless there's an undertaker's convention in town. They see us. Begin diversion. What in the blue blazes? Who are they? Don't fire. We're here to protect. Sort it out later. Fire! I don't think they're listening. Maul, clean up those Daemonites. Just call me the Trash Man. This is Special Agent Higgins. The President is under attack. Repeat, the President is... Hold your fire, Grinder. They're running. Let's get them. That may not be so easy. Shouldn't this be us leaving? Good point. Going down. What was that all about? I've got a feeling this whole thing was a diversion. You mean there were other Daemonites in the area? I'd stake my circuits on it. But the only way we'd know for sure is if Voodoo had been with us. Okay, Maul. Where is she? Sorry, Spartan, it's personal. I promised I wouldn't tell. Look, Maul. Promise or no promise, we need Voodoo back, and fast. Oh, Agent Higgins, that was excellent work today at the UN. Thank you, sir. But I have to warn you that you are about to be attacked again. Uh, uh, are you sure? Positive. What are you? Huh? huh? No! No! Ah! Ah! What <laughs> After these messages, we'll be right back. Watch while I tell you of an ancient war. On the side of evil, Hellespont, ruler of the Daemonites. Against them, the Wildcats, the Carobin Spark, and their cybernetic leader, massive crossbreed maul. Metamorphing Warblade. Master Marksman Grifter. Fierce Warrior Zealot. Will they succeed and defeat Hellspot? We're out of here. And only Wildcats. Wildcats from Playmates. Hey, kid. Think you're an X Man? This is the place to prove it. X Men Headquarters. The Danger Room. Sabretooth and Apocalypse are breaking in. What do you do? The Wrecking Ball. What about Apocalypse? The Battle. Laser. Watch out, kid! The pivoting bomb blaster! Now what? The X Track! I shall return, X-Men! <laughs> Only X-Men get into X-Men headquarters. Action figure full separately. Okay, girl. Think. What are you gonna say to them? Hi, I'm the daughter you deserted? What if they don't want me? <gasps> Ow! Hands off! Why are you doing this? We don't take too kindly to strangers. Put them down, you freak! Now! Well now, fellas. When it comes to strange, 
You ain't seen nothing yet. What are you doing here? Well, nice to see you too. You promised you wouldn't tell the Wildcats where I went. Then again, I never promised I wouldn't follow you. I'm not coming back until I sort this out and find my parents. So? Where are they? Not too far from here. And they can't wait to see you. Are you Orson Kane? Private Eye. Finder of lost souls. You ready to go? Pris, do you think you can trust this guy? What if he's a- I can ID any Daemonite. Trust me, he's just a human being. Don't you get it, Maul? There's life outside the Wildcats, and this is my chance to find mine. I'm ready. Let's go, Mr. Kane. And don't follow me. Have a good trip home. Hmm. That's right, Sam. The vicious assault outside the UN was the work of the Wildcats, a mysterious covert action team. Are they criminals, sir? Or extremists? That information is classified, but I will say that they are a threat to humanity and that they must be stopped. That's all for today. Thank you. Can you say frame up? It's far worse. The only ones who know where the Wildcats are the Daemonites. Are you suggesting that the president has been possessed? Great Minerva! Warblade, see if you can open a channel to Maul. Spartan, Zealot, Grifter, check out the UN area for clues. Let's move! Wildcats? The intelligence boys don't have any record of... David, cancel my appointments. I want to fly to the High Sight Satellite Ground Station ASAP. But, sir... The Wildcats will stop at nothing. Activate Black Razor! But... They're the most powerful anti-terrorist force we've got. Once I get to the high sight ground station, no one must get in. Not until I hand over, over control, control of the satellites, satellites to Hellspawn. This is it? It doesn't look... Well, now, now hush, girl. Your, uh, your mommy and daddy are waiting for you. Now, you hurry on in there, hmm? Mom? Dad, it's me. It's oh! You can't be one of them. I would have sensed it. I'm only human, and these gents paid me real well. What about my parents? No, no. In a moment, all of that will mean nothing to you. What? Something's just not right here. Pal, you're a hard man to reach. Where's Voodoo? I don't think I can say. Blast them all! The Daemonites have got to the president! You're sure? That's why we need Voodoo here! To find out! Do you know where to find her? No. But I know where to start looking. Maul out. Time I did some research myself. White House Dave Sharp speaking. Listen, Dave, could I talk to the president? Personal matter. Sorry, sir, but the president's just about to leave. All of a sudden, we're flying off to... Er, uh, anyway, can I say you called? No, no, don't even mention it. I'll, uh, try later. Go ahead, Spartan. We're in an alley near the UN. I'm getting a heat reading. It's a stasis pod. Inside a trash bin? So, while we were kept busy, another team was in here nailing someone close to the president. Jacob, has Maul located Voodoo? He's working on it, I hope. Which way to the town records? Th that computer, in the corner. Man, is this thing an antique. Warblade would bust a gut. Those filthy, lying monsters. All right, you bug-loving, double-crossing stooge. Where's Voodoo? Oh, put me down! Oh. Looking for me? 
care of them, fool. What'd you do to Voodoo? The life form called Voodoo had no idea of her telekinetic potential. Now I have unleashed it in all its lethal glory. Air traffic data shows that the president is flying to the high site satellite ground station. So it looks like Hellspawn's sending another drone to finish what he started at that lab. Come on. Hellspawn possessed the President of the United States just to blow up a ground station? It's not that kind of sabotage. He's searching for something, and he needs the satellites to find it. Hey, nobody's gonna frisk the Commander-in-Chief. The President hands Hellspawn the satellite system, and no one will know until it's too late. <laughs> Why do you not attack me, Oaf? Has your fear so paralyzed you? <laughs> What'll I do? The only one who can depossess Voodoo is Voodoo. Voodoo, listen to me. Silence, Carabim. You cannot reach her. My control is total. <laughs> oh. Remember these, Pris. They're the flowers you gave me. I want my friend back. All the Wildcats want you back. Mom? No! Ah! Impossible! Nobody can depossess themselves! Well, just call me nobody. Can't breathe. Must escape. You did good, Pris. Wh what about my parents? I'll bring you to them, but first the Wildcats need us. Is Black Razor ready, Captain? Ready for anything, Mr. President. That's very reassuring. Hey! What the? <laughs> the door is jammed. Are you all right, Mr. President? Uh, yes, yes, I'm fine. This must be the work of those subversive wildcats. No sweat, sir. We'll stop them. Okay, we have to stop the president before he takes over the satellites. Boy, fly the Merv away by remote. We're under attack. Can you get it started? If it's got a motor and tires, I can hotwire it. These guys are good. Uh-oh. That's a Black Razor. You know these guys? Let's just say we crossed paths. Come on, cats! Move aside, human. Non-lethal force only. These men don't know whose side we're on. Hey, I'm not even sure I know. There. A small improvement courtesy of Lloyd Hellspond. Mr. President, the Wildcats are attacking. Annihilate them. I mean, do something. Obstruction team, move in. What form of trickery is this? I can't cut this many! Wildcats, pull out! Voodoo, I am glad to see you. I'm glad to be here. Well, what are we sitting around for? Success! <laughs> Too late, Wildcats! Hellspot controls the satellite system. Not for long. <laughs> This could take time. We don't have time. <laughs> what? Bad move. That circuit board must have been set to self-destruct if anyone messed with it. Uh-oh. Maul, catch! Spartan, give me some sky. I am registering a mass 
explosive explosion at the satellite ground station. Enough sitting on the sidelines. Void, get me there, now! What is that thing? Jacob Marlowe? He knows the president? Campaign contributor, very big. The circuit boards have destructed. Why did you not foresee this spellbinder? Patience has spawned. Eventually, you will find what you seek. But when, Providence? When? This is what I found when I went to the library. I'm sorry, Pris. Did... the Daemonites do this? You were just a baby when your parents took you sailing. The boat hit a reef and sank. When the Coast Guard found you, You'd been tied to the mast in a blanket, above the waterline. Your parents... didn't make it. So they died, saving my life. The Daemonites just used a bit of the truth to lure you into a trap. Forgive me for having been so rough on you before. You are truly one of us. Sorry I ran out on you. Now I know you are all my family. Then let's go home. You would have been proud of her. You say you're looking for a lover. You say you're looking for a friend. You say you're for an answer You say you want to make a change You're looking for something to lean on Sometimes your life is pretty strange Well, maybe you'll find some in the garbage Yeah, maybe you'll find some in the trash Maybe you'll find some in the garbage Maybe you'll find some in the trash for adventure You say you want to catch a thrill It's not enough this life you're living There's gotta be some magic pill Well maybe you'll find some in the garbage Maybe you'll find some in the trash Maybe you'll find some in the garbage Maybe you'll find some in the trash
that you did, and don't make me threaten you, because I have the weapons right here beside me. <laughs> and we would usually have some art to show, but we have plum run out. So we just need you guys to send some artwork in, anything that you have done, really, send it on in to smc.maxout at gmail.com and we will show it off for you. And remember to hang out with me on Sunday because I'll be hosting it. All by herself, man. And if you haven't already, that like button and subscribe to our channel. And head over to KJ and the Easel and mass that like button and subscribe to that channel. Subscriptions and max smashes all around all over the internet. For now, we are out of here, and we put you in the capable hands of our closer for today. But make sure that you are here in the same Max Out place in the same Max Out channel next week from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Eastern Standard Time. And you stay for the closer always. Why not you not? Why not you not? But the place that you be for to do this is the one and only place. It's called Saturday morning.
Any news on the location of the Boscorn fleet, Thorndike? Sorry to report, Admiral, but as of now, there's been absolutely no contact from our reconnaissance ships. We're rapidly running out of time. Control's been monitoring all intergalactic travel along the frontier, but so far nothing's come through. The staff stretched to its limit. Well, then double the recon patrol. If we don't find that base soon, we have no hope. Let's speed it up. Patrol ship 5D on scope. Location, quadrant, S6826, N3283, G2467. Approaching planet McQuee at high speed. Admiral Haynes, we found the Britannia. Numerous hostile craft in close pursuit. Hmm, McQuee. That's where old Kinnison's homesteading. Jammed again? Affirmative. The gears, like everything else on this planet, are worn out. Really? You including yourself in that remark? What? And they'll certainly have not. <laughs> I'm sorry, Saul. We'll have to develop your sense of humor. When Kim takes off for Earth, you'll be the only one on this planet I can talk to. Your son's decision to leave is for the past. He's 18, my friend. When I was his age, I wouldn't have settled for piloting a harvester. Buskirk's supposed to arrive any minute. How about we wrap it up for today? Affirmative, Captain! He's a junk. Can't believe I'm traveling through space in that rust bucket. Buzz Kirk, be careful, will you? Correct pitch to R5. Hold your horses, hotshot. Correcting pitch now, okay? Prepare for contact. Wait! Too fast! Uh Whew. Hey, pal, your servos need some oil. What are you talking about? Those Waldos are almost like new. I... Kim! Hey, Kim, are you all right? Oh, sure. No thanks to your finely tuned equipment. Hey! <laughs> Hello. <laughs> uh, uh, you sure make a You've grown up a lot since the last time I was out this way. So tell me the truth, Kim. What do you think of my ship? After all, it is your ticket to the planet Earth. Yeah, it looks more like a ticket to the pearly gates. <laughs> you crack me up. Jeez. 
<laughs> Her name's Anasha Bukaming, and she's quite a fine. Huh? A little dusty, maybe. <laughs> she's built to last. Take this bulkhead, for instance. Solid as a rock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I said, solid. Real, real solid. Oh. Now, don't get the wrong idea from all this. The Nasha Bukami's great. Really, see? Good superstructure, huh? Eh? Mm hmm. In fact. Oh. Hey, Buskirk, are you all right? I'm fine. Kim, check out the engine. That's okay. I think the less I know, the better off I'm gonna be. I'll tell you something, Kim. I'm surprised your dad's willing to let you go so far away from home. He's gonna be mighty lonely. He keeps saying he'll be all right and not to worry. Typical. He always keeps his feelings private, even if you're real close to him. It's his personality. Huh? Now, who could that be? <laughs> Kinnison, how are you? Hey, Buskirk, you haven't changed. Not one bit. Thanks. Owe it all to my Spartan interstellar lifestyle. Don't suppose I could tear you away from dinner down here. I'll have to think about it. You know how I love space rations. <laughs> By the way, have you seen Kim? As a matter of fact, he just came on board. I've been showing him this wonderful ship. Hi there, <laughs> Pop. Hello, son. How does the old ship check out? I told him he should try to get his money back. <laughs> I know you boys have to leave early in the morning, so why don't you come down now and I'll make some dinner for you. Good idea. Your coffee is always the greatest. Hurry up, or you'll have to drink it cold. Perimeter alarm! Unidentified object approaching the planet. It looks like a vessel of some sort. Hmm? Damn it. Whatever it is, it's coming your way fast. At confirmed speed, I don't think I'll be able to get out of range before that thing hits. I'm having Saul project the time of impact. Bus Kirk, if I don't make it, take care of Kim for me. I'm on board the ship. What now? Try to slow it down, son. The controls are basically huh? the same as your psych rotor. Is it responding? I think so. I'll try to bring her in for a soft landing.
Come on, Sol. Affirmative, Captain. Listen, my father will be here in a minute. Hang on. Huh? What's that on your wrist? Traced the Bosco. I found the Devil Planet. Must tell Admiral Hain. The Devil Planet? What do you mean? Fortress. The patrol must be alerted. Hellman. Kimball Kinnison, fate has chosen you to become a lens. This lens will guide you on your journey. Trust in the power of the lens. Why me? Couldn't have landed that ship better myself. You sure are a chip off the old block, I'll say that much. <laughs> Kim, glad you're all right. Great work. Thanks. I just followed your advice, Dad. We've got to help this crewman. He's in real bad shape. Hey, this body's not even warm. I'd say he's been dead for at least a couple of hours. <gasps> Kim, what's the matter? Whoa. I must be dreaming. Look, will somebody please tell me what's happening here? The guy says, bring this to Admiral Haynes, then sparks go off and it's bonded to my hand. <sighs> that pilot was from headquarters? He must have been... a lensman. But that's impossible. I thought those lenses weren't transferable from person to person. You're right. Kim's needed for a mission. Huh? 
data indicates intense seismic activity caused by gravitational interference originating off-planet. The Boscone must have been hunting that lensman. That's typical of the Boscone. Blow up a whole planet just because a man thereafter happens to land on it. The planet will reach critical mass in approximately ten minutes. <laughs> Kim, I can't explain right now, but you and Buskirk have to take this ship. I'll outrun them in Buskirk's. But you can't do that. Pop, you'll never make it. I don't have time for an argument. Now move. No, Father, I won't let you go. It's suicide. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on here, Kennison? Have you blown a fuse? My boy has been chosen for some kind of an important mission. We've got to protect him. He's a lensman. It could mean our survival. You're right. I'm going to be the decoy. Once they're onto me, get Kim safely out of here. Whatever you say. Godspeed, Gary. Sol, I think you'd better go with them. Go. Negative, Captain. What are you talking about, Sol? My order was very specific. Understood. But you need a navigator. All right, you can come with me if you want. Affirmative, Captain! shall be destroyed. Six vessels approaching, Captain. All right. We'd better try a diversion. Dad! Dad! Kim! Boscone in pursuit! I know. But you can't outrun them in the Nashable Comic. Kim? I'm sorry. Listen to me carefully. There's not much time. Fate has chosen you to carry out a great mission. The Eresians have transformed you into a lensman. It's a great responsibility, Kim. Surrender to destiny, wherever it leads you. As for me, I have my own role to perform.
and die for freedom. That's what your father believed. And, and the fact is, he helped establish a galactic patrol. I never knew. He would have been a lensman too if his arm hadn't been so badly injured during a battle. He never said so, but it was his dream. Father. Ken, fate has chosen you to carry out a great mission. The Eresians have transformed you into a lensman. It's a great responsibility. Surrender to destiny wherever it leads you. command we tracked the lensman to the planet McQui. His futile attempts to avoid capture came to no avail. We destroyed the planet and the lensman for the glory of the Bosco Empire. A superb accounting beetle. But where is the proof that the lensman was destroyed? I have none, Master. Greedle, you constantly underestimate the power of the lens. Sorry, my lord. Master, I believe this mission was handled poorly. What? I did nothing wrong! You destroyed the ship before we identified it! A fact conveniently overlooked in your report, Commander. Well, yes, my lord, but no one could survive the destruction. I will comb the rubble for proof! I have no time to waste on your incompetence! You are now in charge. I must have proof that the lensman is destroyed. As you command. <laughs> hey, Kim, look what I found. Great, huh? Where did you get all those weapons? Uh, oh, here and there. <laughs> They're all over the place. <laughs> Pow! Here, catch! Those Boscoon were cold-blooded enough to blow up McQuee just to get rid of that lens one, so I think we might need these. See, you never know what's coming down the pipe. Best to be ready for anything. Ah! What the hell? Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> Oh, 
Uh, Buzzkirk, what happened? Are you all right? Oh, who turned out the lights? frequency, but there was no response, so we boarded you. <laughs> what do you know, Kim? We're knocking heads with the very people we were hoping to get hold of. I'm telling you, we're a couple of idiots. You're right. Sorry I jumped you. Whew. I'm just glad nobody was hurt. What happened to the lensman who was on board? <clears throat> Dead. By the time we got to him, he was gone. I see. Anybody else on the ship? Nope. Just us. Let me take a look at that arm of yours. I'm sure it's all right. Well, I'm the nurse. I'll decide that. <gasps> Captain, ah, come ah. see this man's hand. Huh? The lens. But that's impossible. Everybody keeps saying that. But somehow it happened. All I remember is he told me to get it to Admiral Haynes. Is it causing you any pain or mental disorder? No. Uh, hmm. Really? Yeah. What's the matter? Are you sure you're feeling all right? Yes, I'm fine, I tell you. The boss gonna have tracked us down somehow. Chris, get a report to base, then move out. Affirmative, sir. We'll try to hold them off, but the most important thing is to be sure that this man makes it to the Admiral. I knew I should have taken those classes in crisis stress management. Yeah, it might have been real helpful. Direct hit. We better get out of here. We'll be next. Headquarters emergency. This is Britannia. Over. Status report, Britannia. We're being attacked by enemy ships. Captain Henderson's craft has been blown up. Sorry about Henderson. Have you located the lensman? The lensman was killed. His lens was transferred to a civilian from the Queen. Hey, I have a name. I'm glad to hear it. Do you mind telling us? Kim. Kimball Kennison. Ah! Do you read me, headquarters? We're being fired on. <gasps> the communicator's been destroyed. I'm transferring the ship to inertialess drive. <clears throat> I haven't officially met the pilot. Clarissa McDougall is my name. Chris to my friends. Hi, Chris. You think we'll be able to make it? Well, it's the first time I've flown a ship like this. What? But the control seems simple enough. Please let us escape this one time, and I promise I'll never say another bad word. I knew you oh. could. <laughs> Thanks, I appreciate it. By the way, my name is Van Buskirk. Oh, pleased to meet you. I suppose you want to know something about that lens. Yes, please. I've been told it's a direct link to the Aresian consciousness. Lensmen are specially chosen and trained in how to use it. Supposedly, the lens can't be transferred. Yeah, so how did this happen? Beats me. 
I guess it's a mystery that nobody will ever be able to figure out. The lens man before you put a coded message in the lens that's crucial to the Galactic Federation. I assume it's important enough to affect the outcome of the Boscone War, and that's why we have to get it back to the base. That explains why the Boscone won't let us alone. They want that lens. <laughs> the ship's too badly damaged to continue in hyperspace. We'll make an emergency landing and effect repairs. for the accuracy of your report, Commander. But your orders were to kill the Lensman and to retrieve the lens. Yes, I understand, Your Highness. Lord Helmuth, I have concluded the Lensman is still on the Britannia, which I believe is headed to... Quiet, you colonial worm! Blakesley. Sir? A Boscone commander should be aware of the facts. I swear, sir, no matter where the Lensman goes, I will follow. Wilk, I am now placing you in command. I took the liberty of locking onto the Britannia before it went into hyperspace. Excellent. Now seek out and destroy the Lensman. The ship took quite a beating, but we'll do what we can. Well, somehow we've got to repair this inertialist drive or we'll never achieve hyperspace. What? Sure we can salvage the parts? I sure hope so. Now, where's that ratchet? Hey, Kim, think you can break away from your botanical studies and give us a hand? Kim seems so distracted. Yeah, well, he just lost his dad. God! Oh, I had no idea. Let me load that one for you. You must be tired. I'm not very tired at all. I was real sorry to hear about your father, Kim. Oh, thanks. Uh, hmm? ah. Hey, Buzz Kirk? What, Kim? What do you think of Chris? She's cute. You think so? Sure, kid. Hmm? If she were three feet taller, I could really go for her. What?
I've heard your call, Lensman. Help is on the way. Uh, who the hell? I can see you uh, now. Hold on. Uh, uh, You've never seen a Volantian before. The Fellowship of the Lens is open to all. You should know that. Uh, let me explain. Why are you speaking with your mouth? You should be using your mind. Focus your thoughts through the lens. Excuse me. I am Wurzel, and I too wear the lens. Well, my name is... Uh... Use the lens. Concentrate. My name is Kim Kinnison. Excellent, Kim Kinnison. Now, let's see if we can help your friends. The plant that attacked you is a lower life form known as a Cadillac. It's controlled by the overlords of Delgon. Overlords of Delgon? Who are they? The dictators of this planet, a nasty bunch. By the way, the lens you possess is quite strong. Your cry for help came in loud and clear in spite of my great distance from you. supplying the overlords with thionite for some time. Thionite? It's a highly addictive narcotic. The Boscone have kept the Delgonians under their control by supplying them with it. I've got you! 
Everyone in one piece? Good. We've got to get out of here. Quickly. Who's that? He's a lensman, too. Name's Wurzel. He's a Valantian. I don't care where he comes from. Right now, he looks like a gift from heaven. Detected. Hurry. How the hell do I know? through that skylight? Good idea. Hang on, everyone, and I'll try to fly us up. Wurzel, uh, uh, can you get us uh, any higher? Hang on, Kim. You're going to be fine. We must take care of Kim's injuries before we can attempt to get back to the ship. Get down! Hey, maybe we can hitch a ride. This is no time for jokes. No, Bus Kirk, it'll never work. Hang on tight, kid. I'll get us out of here. All right, Silver. Hey. All right, Shellheads, get us out of here now. Don't worry, Kim. We'll be back on board the Britannia real soon.
we'd better get out of here and fast. I'm afraid we have a bit of a problem. Looks like we're surrounded. Chris, tell me something. Does this ship have homing torpedoes? It should. Perhaps we'll have a chance after all. Wait a minute, that box is a self-destruct system. I know, and I'm programming it for 60 seconds. We'll have to hurry. How far do you plan to travel in these torpedoes? It seems like they're kind of small. They should get us to Radlix. Someone will have to ride with Kim. I'll do it. Oh, no, you don't. Hold on a minute, you two. Kim is my responsibility. He may need help during the trip, and I'm the only nurse around. Besides, you're too big to fit in a compartment with him. You know she's right, Busker. And there's not enough time for us to take a vote. Oh, Kim. All ships, prepare to attack. In you go. Hey, take it easy, will you? It ain't my size! <laughs> Good. Now there is nothing standing in the way of my complete domination of the galaxy. Go to the planet Radlix and wait to hear from me. As you wish, my Lord Helmet. And if I may be so bold, with me in command of your mining operation, the Thionite will flow like water. What they need is... <sighs> Well, you talk too much. Just obey my orders and leave the thinking to me. Thorndike, were you able to make out much of anything from the Britannia's last message? Yes, sir. Central Computer Records has been able to confirm the identity of the person who now has possession of the lens. He's the son of an old friend of yours, I believe. His name is Kimball Kinnison. Kimball? Kimball's just a boy. He is the son of a former patrolman. Even more than that, Gary helped found the patrol. I'm sorry to report that all traces of the Elder Kinnison were lost in the destruction of planet Maqui. But more important to the war effort, sir, we lost all contact with the Britannia after she entered hyperspace. The lens could be anywhere. We'll just have to wait. We can't. I think it's time for us to mount an offensive, and our first target should be the planet Radalix. It's known to be an armed enemy stronghold. Sir. <laughs> I 
this girl. This is the place to let your hair hang down. Cause it's time to get loose, get drunk, and pop <laughs> Besides, it's bad enough watching slobs like you. Guess you need to be taught a dancing lesson, tough guy. On your feet! You and me are gonna dance, damn it! Only if I can lead. The exercise will clear out my lungs have been congested from all the thionite dust in the air. How you doing? We're fine, Bill. Welcome home. Yeah, I'm great. Mm-mm. But I'm much better. You have to get your strength back. <laughs> you men better if you rest. I don't have time to lie around. I've got to get this lens back to the patrol. Keep your shorts on. After a few more days, you'll be as good as new. Hey, you should have seen this dude who started a fire at the club tonight, about seven feet tall, built like a buffalo. Took six guards to bring him down. He was something else. I'll bet that was Buzzkirk. Hmm? Uh, yeah, that's the man's name. Well, it's too bad. He'll probably spend the rest of his life as a prisoner working for the boss going down that goddamn thionite mine. I have to go find him. No, Kim. I'd think twice about getting out of that bed if I were you, boy. <laughs> Please, Kim, you're not strong enough yet. <laughs> hey, lame brain, don't you hear what she's saying? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you'll listen better now. Your body's not up to speed yet, dummy, and I'll tell you something. The fact is, you're lucky to be alive. <laughs> When I found you at the crash site, I was ready to bury you until this woman stopped me and said she could nurse you back to health again. Sorry I spoiled your fun. I might get the chance yet, especially if you try to rescue your friend. That finite mind is constantly patrolled by Bosco and guards. Just forget it. That mind's a prison. The whole planet is. Didn't always used to be this way. Paradise is what it was. 
But then the Boscone came in and took over. At one time, Radalex was the garden spot of the star system. Now it's a wasteland. People came from all over the place just to work in his mind. <laughs> Nobody told him they'd end up as finite addicts. <laughs> <laughs> you can't stop me. Stop you? I came along to help. I knew you'd go after your friend. I've been wondering how long it would take you to sneak out. Ah, right. Took Chris a long time to go to sleep, didn't it? Yeah. So what happened? I thought you both agreed I shouldn't attempt this. <laughs> Hey, sometimes a man tells little white lies. <laughs> Would you deny? <laughs> Here, you're gonna be needing this. Hey, open up, it's DJ Bill. I'm off to the club. I'm late for my shift. All right, but if I hear one sour note, you're out on your ass, get it? No problem. That's right, no problems. Commander Swilk is here and we want it quiet. Okay, I'll be good. so the guards will come on out. Now, the ventilation shaft that leads you to the third level is right down there. Follow it all the way down. But don't go after bus crate until all the guards are out of there. You got that? I'm on my way. And don't get caught!
found the way. <laughs> Drive a Petronia, Dem. Not really. Great. You gotta push a pedal.
What's happening? My apologies, sir. The miners have apparently organized an impromptu revolt. A revolt? Get out there and put an end to it, you idiots! Gigi, see what you can find out. I'll be ruined. Everything is falling apart. We overdid it. Drink again!
he's eliminated the legend. Now he's destroying Radovix. I'm sorry, my lord. I can't, I can't imagine, imagine how this could be happening. happening. You're a fool, Will. I will tolerate your incompetence no longer. So oh, have mercy on me. into one this time. Hey, thanks a lot. Huh? What's that? It's a galactic patrol vessel. Haynes has finally decided to take the battle to the enemy. Kim, your lens holds the key to winning this war. We still have a chance. She's not here. Huh? Hey, watch out, everyone. Stay back from it. It'll burn you. Lemon, I have a message from a friend of yours. Kim! Yeah. Huh? The monster! <laughs> If you think you are capable of saving her, step into the beam. Helma's too powerful. You'll be killed. Kim, stay away. Complete your mission. She's right. Without that lens, the Galactic Alliance will be destroyed. Don't worry. I'll make sure the lens is delivered all right. But first, I've got to rescue Chris. <sighs> 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 Wow. Huh. 
<laughs> That's more something else. Go for it, Kim. Go for it. Preparations completed for a full-scale attack, sir. Good. Where's Chris? Bring her out, Helmet. Ah, Lensman, how good of you to accept my invitation. Kim! Kim! God, I'm glad you're safe. <laughs> Damn you, Helmet! <laughs> I left things in the hands of underlings and incompetent fools for too long. Obviously, if you want something done right, you have to do it yourself. <laughs> ah! <laughs> An illusion, perhaps, but your terror and pain are certainly real enough.
<laughs> you disappoint me, Lensman. Witness the pitiful state of your galactic fleet. They are no match for my powers. Injuring yourself to remove the illusions? Very good, Lensman. Quite resourceful. Resistance is futile. I've toyed with you long enough. Time to die. Stubborn fool! Use your heart. Combat the evil. Status update, tell me what's happening. Huh? It began as an enormous radiation blast, but it's formed into coordinate information transmitted from the lens. What? You're sure about that? It's the position of the Devil Planet. Lock onto it and transmit to all fleet commanders. The boy came through? Amazing. The power is unbelievable. I hope he's all right.
Helm is gone. You used the power of the lens to protect the one you love. That's what you meant about using my heart. Chris. Thanks to you, the Galactic Fleet is attacking my fortress. It seems I underestimated you, Lensman. I won't make that mistake again. Done the impossible, Lensman. The Adorian fortress has been exposed and the Boscone defenses are falling. Chris, wait, we gotta go back. You sniveling upstart. My weapons have no effect on him. Unbelievable! The fortress is coming apart! Wurzel, do exactly as I say. Come around and fly right for Helmut's eyes. I'm gonna use the lens. Understood. Kim, are you all right? Uh, let's go back! Your insolence will now cost you your life!
Waited a long time for this moment, sir. We owe this victory to Kimball Kinnison and to the power of the lens. We witness the birth of a new lensman. Kim, you're behaving like a child. Behaving like a child? <laughs> Kim's not a little boy anymore, that's for sure. The Valerian's right. Kim's quite a courageous young man, and he's been given a power unique among lensmen. <laughs> that kid got more than courage. He's crazy. I mean, he's crazy about you, Chris. <laughs> Ain't that right? Huh? No, I can't say why, sugar lips. Oh, <laughs> you're awful. <laughs> Kim, I, I think that I, uh, you're wonderful. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah. Mm. <laughs> Chris? Oh, oh, no, no, Buster, please. I won't survive it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Please, get out. Oh, yeah. Leave me alone. Oh, yeah. Why don't you just go back and do something?
Thank you. 